How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <clears throat> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. And this guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? Thank God! Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone! <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new Smarty Pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! Oh! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc. This guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry. I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> ah, crap. I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad! Son of a... Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you. If you're gonna stay late... Don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. My pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez! Sorry! I thought you was someone else! Maybe uh, I should start wearing a bell? I wish you'd have thought of that earlier! It's that guy again! What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight to McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in her room getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw a money bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's going to abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing? Nothing. Why'd you have to 
drag me into this. I didn't do anything. Shut up, shut up. You're in it now. Someone's after me. I need a gun. Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can't... Wait a second, McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't get time to explain. I think we've been made. Whoa, easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? <laughs> I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kind of cold. What do you feds want from me now? The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name, not so? Nice uniform, not so. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! <gasps> Jimmy, what's a gabagool? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, chick magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. <laughs> For Canada! And ow! Oh, my stitches popped. <laughs> Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. You hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on, Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the f out of here! Woo! Chick Magnet's giving you a six bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and Unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well, then, I suppose this is goodbye? Really? I never hugged a cop before, unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it, Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> what are you doing? I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on, but first we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details. I don't know, ask Petey. I can, he'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed. Wait, it had an eye missing. Good, good. So we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me. Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Oh, don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcones. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna... 
get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Call McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? <gasps> Agent McCool's special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking Dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? Try morphine. This sh is awesome. This isn't Chick Magnet. It's Petey. Petey? Hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home. We called them my uncles. No, uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! <laughs> what am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! <laughs> I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See? A truck full of lambs. Oh, right. Good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no. There's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy with my little eye two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that. Hey, Cheech? Cheech. Aw, he fell asleep. <laughs> Mummy, you don't have to turn on the red light! <sighs> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. Thundering Thunder Bay! Jimmy! <laughs> Gallop like the wind, horse! Jimmy's in trouble! Up Canada! Where friendship trumps infection every time! Okay, now we run him through the dryer a bunch of times to make him look old. I can't do this. I can lie to you and Pop. But Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now. If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Three more Kims and we'll be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm going to do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go, it's for the best. For us, at least. Stop double cross. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. <laughs> Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh. We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying? Rum? Rum. Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around. This guy needs help. Oh, 
God, could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron. But what about Calif... Oh... You trying to kill us? You're a fed. I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them. <laughs> ah, my eyes! Ah! Do you ever wash your feet? <clears throat> hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback too? Between you and me. My nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know. I'm cold, too. No, oh, I mean all the time. We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old barn? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Whose head is Ma gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right, now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <gasps> how? The hard way. <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Ah, the tag was chafing me. You threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because I keep money in him, that's why. I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble. <laughs> now, let's have a little talk about how I'm going to get my money back. <sighs> I'm not the one you want. It's Ma. She dragged me into this. Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? Say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I gonna incriminate myself? Oh, that's great. I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more. We gotta fight back. Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Ah, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time till help comes. Give me that. Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, chick magnet, get him up. Get him up. You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? Oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. <laughs>
You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up. I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool! You're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, Donkey Dong. <laughs> ah! Horse! Good boy! Give him hell, horsey! Stop it, horse! You're only stomping lifeless pulp! Up on, boys! No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism! What do you want from me? I got a craving. Petey told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny, same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears the Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! This! <laughs> well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former New York copper. In the old life, the feds were always up in my business. These guys had ears everywhere, and by ears, I mean bugs. But I didn't let that keep me from being a normal family man. Someone! That's my girl. Messing with the feds was a game. I got the fat bastard right here, and I'm gonna chop off his legs and feed him to the dogs! On the ground, now! Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha! Oh, good one, Jimmy. I'd offer you guys a turkey sandwich, but fuck you. If it was real important, we'd talk in code. But that came with its own problems. Cheech, I need you to pick up the magic potion from the Maharaja and take it to the wizard. And make sure you look into his crystal ball. Gabish. Gabish. By magic potion, you mean the eight keys of heroin, right? On the ground, now! Now that I'm in witness protection living in Canada, I don't ever gotta worry about bugs again! Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went and dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped him, they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Cookie, that was super. You're a regular George Foreman in the kitchen. Thanks, Jimmy. And now for the knockout. Cannoli. Yeah. <clears throat> James McTugo? Who's asking? Angus McTavish. Don't ring a bell. Do I know you? No, lad. But our ancestors fought on the moors for three centuries. This weekend, you and I pay tribute to their bravery at the Regina Highland Games. Uh, speaking the English? I'm throwing down the gauntlet, laddie. See you at the caber toss. Go, McTavish! Who was that? Some Australian lunatic in a skirt. Thank <laughs> you.
Problem. There's this Dutch exchange student at school, Yetzi. No one pays attention to him. He said he feels invisible. And you care about Dutchy why? I consider it a civic duty to aid new students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bleeding heart, save the whales, help the Dutchman. I get it. Here's my advice. School's like prison. He wants a rep? Tell him to kick someone's ass. Gina, not every problem can be solved through violence. <laughs> Helping you with a dishes no more. You got it? Okay! See, Petey? I had a problem and violence solved it. Want me to demonstrate again? No! I'd appreciate it if you could keep Riff Raff like Scotty McBozo off of my doorstep. But you're a McDougal now. The Scottish community is finally inviting you into the fold. You just had to go and make me Scottish, didn't you? Why couldn't you just make me Italian? Because you'd have been too easily identified as ex-mafioso. Oh, so Italian automatically means mob to you? You racist sack of shit. I ought to put one in your head, run your body through a meat grinder, and bury you in cement! But I take your point. So you'll attend the games then? Not a chance. If you refuse this challenge, the Scottish Canadian Times will brand you a coward. You'll wind up on their shite list, along with other things Scottish people hate, like the Queen, underwear, and fresh vegetables. Do you want your friends back home to find your picture in gear, Jimmy? I guess not. Then have fun at the games for Canada, where every culture gets a ridiculous summer fair. Remember, everybody be cool and act like you're Scottish. Just be crabby and cheap. Don't worry, Jimmy, we'll blend right in with these weirdos. Uncle Cheech, stay out of my closet. That's a good color on you. So, you lily livered McDougals grew a pair and showed up. Welcome to the Highland Games, you wankers. Thank you for inviting us. Don't get a swelled head, lassie. Every Scot in the phone book was invited. Right, to the kitchen with you, Nessie. You're on Haggis duty. Go on! Those sheep's stomachs don't stuff themselves. Blend. Ah! To the field of combat, lads! Or should I say, lassies? <laughs> See? Blend him right in. Let me get this straight. We gotta cook this thing's stomach. How are we gonna get it out, ma? Same way your father did with Joey the Fink. Ah! Oh. Oh, look at that! Hammer toss! Beat that, McDougal! You know, this kind of reminds me of collecting protection money back home. Off the field! <laughs> You throw like a bloody Englishman. Thanks, Angie. That's supposed to be an insult, you tit. I salute you. <laughs> Wheat sheaf toss. Snack on that, McDougal. This reminds me of the time we threw Big Cheese Romano off the roof. <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> and you call yourself a Scott. Why don't you change your name to Scott? Ah! Ooh! Oh, it's on. <laughs> what you did? That's my girlfriend. I mean. Uh, my mascot! There's a raft of sheep stomachs in the fridge, you daft Marys! Oh. Watch your back, lamb chop. <laughs> Cable toss in your face, McDougal! This reminds me of something, too. <laughs> uh, I guess I never killed no one with a tree trunk before. What, you've been living in a cave? <laughs> <laughs> Off the field again! Oh, victory for Clan McTavish! 
Good game, ain't it? <laughs> Jimmy, aren't you mad he beats you? You're the sorest loser I know. Did I lose, Cheech? Did I? McCall! Mahoose! William! Oh, William, me baby brother. Ugh, but that's what you get for not going to the games, you bastard! Sorry, Yetzi. Who would have guessed the Saturday Academic Achievers Jamboree was just a bunch of grade-grubbing dorks? But don't worry, we'll find you some cool friends. <laughs> My sister suggested you pick a fight with someone to get noticed, which is totally absurd. Yetzi, cut it out! That's not going to work! Will you stop it? That's enough! <laughs> Ah, sh**. Yetzi, I'm so sorry. Wait, you forgot your teeth. Hey, everyone. Thought I'd drop in. <laughs> oh, look. It's eccentric billionaire Richard Wheatthin. Do I smell haggis, or is that Jimmy's feet? <laughs> and he brought a studio audience to laugh at his dumb jokes. Might I say, Cookie, you look delicious. Can I try a bite? When it comes to haggis, I'm a bit of a gastronome. I've eaten it all around the world. Around the world? That would make you a gastronaut! Seriously? That was gold! Mmm, amazing. You can barely taste the intestines. Cookie, I have a proposition for you. I've been getting propositioned all day. <laughs> that gets a laugh? You're a bunch of dicks. This is my Scottish restaurant, Wee Wee Wheat Thins. For some reason, business has been slow. But I think we can turn this place around with Cookie as my new executive chef. Wow, Jimmy, what do you think? What's that think about? You can do this in your sleep. But who'll run the house? I will. How hard can it be to take care of two kids? Three kids. See? We'll all be learning new things. Go for it. It might be fun. In that case, Mr. Weathen, I accept. To whom, Betty? I was stirring in the kilt, and I'm feeling a wee bit bad. I'm your new chef, Cookie McDougal. Now, I'm a little new to Scottish cooking, but I've been doing a wee bit of research, and I'm sure all you lads and lassies will be great. <laughs> These have been in the freezer for three months, and you want to serve them to customers? This is a restaurant, you jag off, not a Viet Cong prison camp. Are you sweating in the soup? What the hell is wrong with you? You know what? Screw it! Let's just serve them warmed over piss! Squat down! No? Then start over! <laughs> you can't cry in the kitchen. If I see one more of you motherfuckers crying in here, it's in the fucking oven you go! Head first! You think I'm playing? <laughs> and let that be a lesson to all of you! <laughs> in pan. This stuff's red, but it'll have to do. Add onion. Done. Why doesn't it look like the picture? Daddy, I need help with my homework. I'm a little busy, but... What's the capital of Canada? That's easy. Capital C. Daddy, I only eat gluten-free. Is that gluten-free? Don't worry. I ain't gonna charge you. Pop, I broke Yetzi's jaw. Good for you, son. But he's my friend. So you straightened out your friend. I'm proud of you. But I feel like a monster. I said I'm proud of you. I quit fishing for compliments. Daddy, can you hand wash my bras and panties? Oh, I ain't touching that stuff. Pop, what's in a nook shook? Mom does it. Pop, is that meat sauce? I don't eat anything with a face. We're having face for dinner? I wanted chicken fingers. Daddy, I gotta make a solar system. Daddy. 
Daddy, up. I need clean panties. Pop, I almost killed Yetzi. I want a chicken finger. I think I need counseling. Daddy, Pop, Daddy. I almost killed Yetzi. Oh, chicken fingers! Yeah! That's it! Go to bed, all of you. But it's only 6.30. I said go to bed! You know what? Change my order to face. You too, Cheech. Bed! But Jimmy! Do I have to take off this belt? I'll be good. I hope Yeti's in school today. I feel terrible about... What the hell? Aw, oh, poor little Yeti. Do you want another blended cheeseburger? Hey, there's the bully that did this to Yeti. <laughs> Gina's wrong. High school's not like prison. Though I do have goo all over my face. I bet that happens in prison. Amazing, Cookie. In just one week, you've totally turned this place around. How did you do it? Get the hell out of my kitchen. I'm trying to work here. <laughs> now, now, I am your boss. Sorry, sorry. Mom, Pop ruined my underwear. He made me go to bed at 6.30 last night. I've been up since 3 a.m. I ain't naming no names, but a certain fat ass ruined my homework. Jimmy! I need a change. What the hell? Look at this freaking place. There's footprints on the ceiling, the TV's on fire, and why am I standing in three feet of water? Oh, for God's sake, where's your father? Jimmy! Hey, Cook. What the hell's going on here? Nice to see you, too. Look at this place. What exactly do you do all day? Besides work nine to five? Okay, 10 to three? 11 to 2 with a long lunch? I'm busting my butt at the restaurant 24-7, and you can't even keep this house going? Me? What kind of mother leaves her family starving and laundry lists and having to figure out the capitals of Canada all by themselves? What about your womanly duties? Oh, of course, my womanly duties. How could I forget? Remind me again what those are. Like having dinner ready on the table for your husband? Like it says in the Bible? What part of the Bible says that? You know, the part where Jesus fights the whale. I thought this restaurant thing was gonna be a nice little hobby. Did you just say nice little hobby? That's it, I'm out of here. Where are you going? Back to work, where I get some respect. I respect you plenty. It's not like I told you to get in the kitchen, take off your top and make me a sandwich. Which actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Since Cookie won't listen to reason or the Bible, we gotta shut this place down. You know, for the good of the kids. Kills me to see him neglected like that. Special Agent McCool, nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Full disclosure, Cookie, I sometimes moonlight as the regional health inspector. Well, I'd offer you a bribe, but my kitchen is so spotless, you could eat off the floor. Speaking of which, you done licking the floor yet, Rodney? Don't worry, Cookie. My visit tonight is strictly as a haggis and cockaleeky craving customer. Waiter, there's a hand in my soup. <coughs> and you're closed. You can't do this. Sorry, Cookie. Wee Wee Wheat Thins is now officially a crime scene. Jeez, tough break, Cook. But hey, you had a good run. No shame in that. Oh, for shame, there's a foot in the salad bar. You're a great chef. You deserve success. And you would have had it, but what are you gonna do? It's the unpredictable hand of fate. Actually, it was the hand of Lorenzo. What I'm saying is, maybe this is a sign that your place is at home with your family and their laundry. You're right, Jimmy. Nothing to do now but take my failed ass home. Bada bing! <laughs> Jimmy, what the hell? Excuse me, sir. Do you have a reservation? What are you talking about, Teresa? It's me. This is my house. Nope. This is Mighty McDougal's House of Haggis. You turned our house into a restaurant? You said you wanted me home, so I came home. But it ain't fair to my customers to shut down, so I brought them with me. Thanks for being so supportive, sweetheart. I do not remember being supportive. And I do not remember you having a reservation. Cheech, will you look at what Cookie's done to this place? I know. If I do a good job, I could make dishwasher. Gina, how about getting the old man some food? I'm starving here. No can do, Pop. We're full up. Mm. Now get 
get you a shrimp cocktail. And a beer. No dice. All we got here is Rob Royce. Can we get a Heineken, a spritzer, and a fuzzy navel? Three Rob Royce coming up. For the last time, I do not want to buy a fucking rose. Finally, a little peace and quiet. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, seriously? And he's like, Tut, seriously. Wow, so you do have genital warts. <laughs> <That's it! laughs> Restaurant's closed! You want a doggy bag? Bag this! Hey, Jack, shut up! Jimmy, have you lost your freaking mom? I can't stand it no more, Cook! I tried being supportive, but this restaurant thing is tearing our house apart! Shwash! Baby, I need you! The kids need you! Shut down this circus and let's be a family again! Wait, you said I was great! You said I deserved success! And now you're running around like a freaking animal killing my business! We're shutting this place down too! Oh well, beat sawn off hands. Ah, crap. That was you? How could you do that to me? Cookie, I'm sorry, I was losing my mind. You have no idea how hard it is to run a household on your own. I don't? You looked after the house for a week, Jimmy. I've been doing it for 16 years. Enjoy sleeping on the couch, mister, because you ain't getting nowhere near my meat locker tonight. That's kind of a weird thing to call your vit Oh, you mean the bedroom. Ow! If you want this <laughs> shrimp cocktail, you're going to have to throw some pants on. <laughs> Oh. He's miserable, and I feel terrible. That's marriage for you. What are you gonna do? She was happy working at the restaurant, and we blew it. I gotta go make this right. How much righter can you get? She's back in the kitchen where she belongs. She was in a kitchen, you moron, and I'm putting her back there. Jimmy, she's already there. Teach, maybe sit this one out, all right? Fine by me. I want off this freaking emotional roller coaster anyway. All right, what do you want? I've realized that prison rules don't apply in Canada. Here, people reward the victim, not the aggressor. If I want to be surrounded by girls like Yetzi, I need to get my ass kicked. Wait a second. You want me to beat you up in front of the girls? I want some of the action he's getting. What better way to get sympathy than by being unjustly trounced by a thug? Edie, think this through! <gasps> Hurry up, come on, hit me! No, get lost, you whack job! Come on, just a few good shots! Real quick, give me what I want! Let go of me, you freaking psycho! <gasps> now Yetzi's bully is assaulting a little girl! Get him! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What are we doing here? McCool called, said there was a major situation happening. Jimmy, what's going on? And why are you dressed like an undertaker? Good evening, Chef Cookie. Welcome to the reopened Wee 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 Thins. I'll be your new matron D. Good news, Cookie. Your husband helped us solve the mystery of the severed hand. <gasps> Thanks to Jimmy, you're back in business. Oh, Jimmy, you big sweet moron, you. Sorry I messed things up for you, Cook. Gosh, it's kind of slow tonight. Only two customers. It's 8.30. The place should be packed. Maybe they heard about the hand in the soup. People talk, you know. Or maybe it was the fat, naked, hairy guy hitting people with his junk. Hmm. I was worried this might happen. You see, Cookie, haggis is strictly a novelty food. People only ever try it once, usually under the influence of alcohol. So... There won't be any repeat customers. Not a one, I'm afraid. Wee 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 Thins has run its course. Then why'd you bother reopening? Yeah, why'd I get my hopes up? What can I say? For me, Scottish food can be very haggis-forming. <laughs> Give it a rest. You know what? You and your stupid restaurant just about ruined my marriage. Well, I guess I ain't a cook no more. Baby, in the kitchen of my heart, you'll always be head chef. A round of drinks for everyone! We're celebrating the birth of me son!
How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal. Used to be Jimmy Falcon. I may be living like a jerk in witness protection, but back in the day, I was a made guy. I was the head of a crew and no one could touch me. Basically, I had it made. It's a funny story how that happened. This one night, they told me to keep Don Gambini away from his house because his wife was throwing him a surprise birthday party. Everyone's acting all weird and secretive, Jimmy. I'm telling you, something's going on. If I screwed up the surprise, his wife would kill me. Literally. She was built like a lumberjack and she was real good with an axe. Anyway, I shall get going. We just got here, boss. At least finish your drink. Hey, look! Look at Cheech go! <laughs> I could swear I just finished that. The thing about the Don was he got jumpy when he drank too much. Who did that? i plug you, you rat! But I got him home in time, just like I was supposed to. I guess the surprise was on them. The Don took out so many guys that night, I wound up getting made. But if you think I still got it made here in Regina, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Oh, someone's in a good mood. What can I say? The sun's up, the sky's blue, and me and Cheech are going to the track. My money's on third and the fifth. Who the hell names a horse third anyway? Isn't there something you want to say to me, Jimmy? What's for breakfast? No, something else. Um... Uh... Oh, right, you got your head done. Looks good. No, I didn't, you moron. You got no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Have a nice freaking day at the track. I hope a horse craps on you. Me too. It's good luck. You get the feeling Cookie was mad? What are you talking about? She said have a nice freaking day at the track, didn't she? Get a load of this. McCool's bringing me flowers. Don't be silly, Jimmy. These aren't for you, they're for Cookie. Hold up there, Kimosabi. You want to explain why you're bringing my wife flowers? And believe me, there's no right answer to that question. Ah, uh, Jimmy, your sense of humor is like a fresh breeze off the Canadian Rockies. Do I look like I'm joking? Seriously, tell me, because I can't see my own face. What a card you are, Jimmy. These are for Cookie's birthday. Oh, crap! Listen, you gotta help me out. Give me those flowers. Certainly not. I cultivated, picked, and arranged these myself. Well, would you look at that? Special Agent McCool remembered what Mr. What's for Breakfast over here forgot. Thank you, McCool. You are most welcome. Many happy returns, Cookie. For Canada, where no one forgets your birthday! Unless his name's Jimmy McDougal. Whoa, Cook, you got it all wrong. I know it's your birthday. I got a, a big surprise planned for you. Is that so? Well, I'm calling you bluff. Give me those. You're not pulling together some crappy gift at the last minute. Cook, I got a surprise planned like you wouldn't believe. Prepare to have your mind blown. Yeah? Well, prepare to never get blown again. I know a load of bullshit when I hear it. Jimmy, if we're not going to the track, can you let me out? Petey, why are my Cosmo pages all stuck together? Whoa. What are you doing? I realized what my biggest problem is when it comes to girls. That you're a complete loser? No, not that. The problem is, I don't know how to break the ice. So, I built a robot to do it for me. You sure that's a good idea? Last time you built one, it didn't work out so well. First rule of Robot Fight Club, build a robot. Second rule of Robot Fight Club, program that robot to fight. Petey Bot is 
programmed to meet, charm, and disarm girls. Then I step in to seal the deal. <laughs> that won't work. He's still you. Just wait until you hear him say something suave. Something suave. <laughs> Ooh, Petey, aren't you going to introduce me to your robot friend? Ew. So you forgot Cookie's birthday. Big deal. She has one almost every year. She'll get over it. Oh, yeah? Remember the time I spent in the hospital back in New York? Sure. When those jackoffs from the Venucci crew plugged you. It wasn't the Venucci's. It was Cookie. I forgot our anniversary and she put one in me. That was Cookie? Ah, on. We went to war with the Venucci's over that one. I know. A lot of lives were lost, Jimmy. Yeah, I get it, Cheech. I mean, some of our best guys. Drop it, will you? Fine. I gotta get ready anyways. For what? I needed some me time. So, I got a ticket to this all-gal review. All-gal review? You mean like strippers? Ah, it's classy. Dinner and a show. Like the nightclubs in the old days before they all turned into discus. Dinner and a show? That's perfect! Cookie loves that kind of crap. I'll order tickets right now. Give me a laptop. No can do. It broke. All right, let's see some nakeds. Holy shit, it's Chief Falcone! No, it ain't. Okay, it is. How you been, Carmine? I'm gonna get you, you stinking rat! <laughs> Miss me, you son of a bitch! All right, listen. I've had a crush on her for weeks, but I've never been able to talk to her. Go introduce yourself, charm the pants off her, and set up a date. Affirmative. Remove. Girls. Pants. No, that's just an expression. Come here. I will charm the girl. That's better. Go get her! This is gonna be great. Goodbye loneliness. Goodbye Cosmo magazine. Goodbye crinkly socks. <laughs> yes, it worked! No, it worked too well! How is she Frenching him? He doesn't even have a tongue. Broken hips and wrinkly lips, a geriatric review. I don't know how you did it, but this is definitely a surprise. I gotta admit, I'm kinda hurt you didn't trust me, Cook. Give me two, good seats. 300 bucks. 300 bucks? Man, I should become a scalper. Is that word offensive to you people? Not at all. 500 bucks. It's directed me! It's directed you! It's directed me! It's directed you! What a show! What? Huh? Oh, yeah! Bravo! I loved it! Mm. Especially that one song, Hot Flash Dance. I like the number where they fell and couldn't get up. It really spoke to me. Let's go backstage, Jimmy. I want to get an autograph. You coming? Nah, I'm gonna head home and see what I can do with the hole I blew in my laptop. If there's a tie on my door, don't come in. This job must be so much fun. When I was a kid, I wanted to be on Broadway. When I was a kid, I wanted to extort the unions on Broadway. <gasps> Jimmy? Are, are you Jimmy Falcone? What? No, you got the wrong guy. I don't know no Jimmy Falcone. Ah, crap, you been recognized. Go call him a cool. All right, if it comes down to it and you got a whacker, get me an autograph first. Listen. Lady, if I was you, I'd have a senior moment and forget you ever saw me. It's me, kid. It's you. You who? Me. Your pop. Sal Falcone. Listen, you sick maniac. My pop is dead. And I'm not Jimmy Falcone. Drop the act, Jimmy. I know you're in witness protection. Don't worry. I'm not gonna rat out my own son. I hate to break it to you, Looney Tunes, but my father was a man. Not anymore, I ain't. Come here, kid. So... It's probably wrong that I have a boner right now, isn't it? Look, lady, I got no idea who you are, but there's no freaking way you're Jimmy's father. Yeah, my pop disappeared when I was 13. We all figured the Tortellini family offed him. And I hate to keep hopping on this, but he wasn't abroad. I swear on the eyes of my only son, which is you, that I used to be Sal Falcone. Okay, Sal Falcone. What was my mother's name? Apollonia Maria Teresa Falcone. Lucky guess. What about her maiden name? Butchino. Not bad. Okay, so when was I born? A little too soon after the wedding, <laughs> if you know what I mean. This is crazy! Are you an actual woman or just dressed up like one? Uh, let me explain. Jimmy, I loved your mother. She was a beautiful woman. But deep down, I always felt like a broad trapped inside a man's body. Of course, the mob don't look too kindly on that kind of thing. I had to be careful. It was starting to affect my work. 
I couldn't stop. I started taking stupid risks. I knew if I got caught, my friends would whack me. So I left to start a new life where I could finally, surgically, become a woman. Since then, I've been living as Sally Monero. That's quite a... I mean, what? Pick your goals down, down, down! Hey! What's the big idea? All right, we've neutralized the threat. You're safe for now. I'll take her downtown, grill her, and assess the situation. Don't worry, Jimmy. Canada has your back. I don't know about you, but I need a drink. Make mine a double, then double it. What are you doing here? I am waiting for my date. I'm the one who's supposed to go on the dates. You're supposed to step aside and let me jump in. When the time is right. When is that gonna be? Indeterminate. Need additional data. Come on, you're just jerking me around. Indeterminate. Need additional data. This is not what I programmed you for. Hide. Here she comes. Your presence is agreeable. Is that a new hat? Aw, oh, come on! Should I jump in now? Not yet. Now? Not yet. Uh, now? Not yet. Uh, uh. Why did I make him anatomically correct? So, what did she say? Good news, Jimmy. There's absolutely no risk of her informing on you. In fact, she's in more danger from the mob than you are. You merely broke a blood oath that you swore on your life to uphold. She turned into a lady. They hate that. <clears throat> Don't be that way, Jimmy. She's a delightful person with a wonderful sense of humor and a sparkling personality. Don't get any ideas, big guy. So now what? Do you make her disappear or do I? Disappear? Oh, contraire, I suggest you spend some time with her before she leaves town. I, too, lost my father at a young age, and not a day goes by I don't wish for a chance to speak to him again. To say, Father, why do you care more about huffing gasoline and chasing Thai ladyboys than you do your own son? But alas, I cannot. This is a gift, Jimmy. Open it. I think I'll just return it for store credit. Family is for life. All sales are final. For Canada! where it's not gay to be with a transgender! Hey! It's 4.15 and you're drunk? I had some soup at lunch and it was so good and then a bunch of my friends were having soup and then I just got crazy. <laughs> crazy. That soup is so f***ing good. You know your robot is nailing anything that moves at school. What? He broke up with Sheila, then started seeing Jenna, and broke up with her and saw Anna for a while, and now he's fooling around with Kelly. Dude is a player. You should get in on that action. I'm gonna hurl. Listen, Buster. I programmed you to get me a girlfriend, not to bang every girl in school. According to PDBot's calculations, the only chance of you having a girlfriend is if PDBot has one for you. That's insane! What can I say? Players gonna play, haters gonna hate, yo. Hey, Grandpa Marcel, when you turned into a lady, did the operation hurt? What operation, kid? I went into a cocoon. <laughs> hey, whose car is in the... Gotta go! Not so fast, Jimmy. <laughs> oh my god, Daddy! Oh, Your daddy is so much fun! You got lovely kids here, Jimmy! <laughs> ah, what the hell is he... She doing here. I went to apologize for getting her arrested. We got to talking, and I realized she's family. So what? Now every Tom, no Dick, and Sally who shows up is family? Give her a chance, will ya? No thanks. You get your ass over there and enjoy your goddamn family. No! Jimmy, where you going? Don't run out. What? Like you did to me? What an asshole. Pull over! We need to talk! No! We got some things to work out. No, we don't! Come on, kid! We gotta deal with this! I don't gotta do nothing!
Jimmy. Can you? Hey! This ain't over, Jimmy! Damn it, I chipped a nail. Uh, that's for not calling me. Uh, that's for sleeping with my sister. Uh, that's from my mom. Oh! Uh, Your presence is agreeable. Gah! The guy's a machine! Police deny the helicopter crash had anything to do with a recent epidemic of teenage drunkenness. Hey, when is Grandpa Marcel gonna visit again? She's gonna show me how to off a guy with a scrunchie. She ain't coming back to this house. You kidding me? Why not? I don't want her around you. You're taking away the one woman I can actually learn something useful from. What? You're seriously robbing me of the only strong female role model in my life? I'm standing right here. Gina, I'm your father, and I can rob you of whatever the hell I want. Jimmy, that's enough. Don't listen to him, Gina. Go get yourself a cookie. What's the matter with you? Are you going to crap on everyone just because your father changed into a woman? Nah, that's his freaking business. What am I going to do, change him back? So what are you pissed off about? I'm pissed off because he left me! He never even said goodbye! Why? What did I do? Was it something wrong with me? Wasn't I good enough? Oh, Jimmy, it wasn't your fault. Jesus Christ, what is this, an after-school special? Hey, Gina, get down here. There's someone who wants to see you. Grandpa Marcel's here? Nope, better than that. I'm real sorry for yelling at you. So I got you a pony. What the hell I need a pony for? Because you're the best little girl in the world and you deserve it. I don't want a pony. Sure you do. It's great. You can comb her hair, have tea parties, ride her around. You don't know me at all, do you, Pop? Of course I do. What kind of a father would I be if I didn't know my little girl? Come on, give her a spin. I don't wanna. It smells like Cheech's room. Just try it, will ya? Here, over here. Here, boy. Here, horse. Here, pony. Come on, pony. Come on. Come on, you f***ing horse. You trying to kill me, Pop? What the hell's the matter with you? Have fun, sweetie. F*** you! I am a good father. Come on, I hate you. <laughs> Sweetie? <gasps> What are you doing? Just checking in with my favorite oldest daughter. How are things, kid? How's your life? Fine, but I'm kind of busy right now. Just wanted to see how you're feeling. A little weirded out. Are you dying or something? No, no, I'm just fine. And I'm never leaving you. Well, at some point you're going to die. Look, nobody's dying. I'm going to kill you, Jimmy. What the hell are you doing buying Gina a psychotic pony? What? I'm just trying to be a good father. You're already a good father, mostly. Stop trying to prove it before you kill someone. It's Sally you need to work things out with. Now go talk to her, you big dope. She's right, Daddy. Go do that right now, like immediately. Yeah, get your head out of your ass, will ya? <sighs> You're right. I should probably go talk to him. Her. Darren, you can come out now. Darren? Darren? <gasps> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Come on, pick up, pick up. It's an emergency, damn it. Hey. Oh, hey, Brad. Turns out I am free tonight. What are you doing? I'm sorry, but for the good of those girls and the continued survival of my nads, I need to power you down. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Petey. Hasta la vista, Petey Bot. <coughs> Wrong remote. I installed that. I am sorry, Petey, but it is you that must be terminated. Why do robots always turn on their masters? Why do masters always anger their robots? No, no. Damn it, that's of no use to me. Violence is never a solution. <clears throat> okay, maybe under some circumstances. Hey, what's with all the racket? I killed. Petey Bot. No, I killed Petey Bot. No, I killed Petey Bot. Okay, I'm bored. Pop, wait! <clears throat> you got the stuff. You got the money. Ow! Ah, the mother! Who's in your trunk? A cop? 
What the hell you doing, Pop? What's it look like? I'm selling weed. You kidding me? Hey, you can take the fella out of good fella, but that don't make him good. What the hell you doing here? All right, I don't like surprises. We're gonna have to plug you two. The hell you will. Pop, I don't care about you becoming abroad, but why the hell did you leave me? Wait a sec. This lady's your father? Yeah, I used to be a man. Deal with it. Do you got any idea how tough it was growing up without a dad around? What? You think it didn't tear my heart out to leave? You abandoned your own kid? That's unconscionable. Let's kill her. Wait, wait. I want to see where this is going. If I stayed and got caught, do you think you would have ever grown up to be a capo? Nah, you would have been a laughingstock. See? What choice did she have? Well, he could have suppressed his desire to be a woman and raised his son. That would have made for a real healthy father-son relationship. You better forgive your dad, mister. You mind your business. Yeah! yeah. Jimmy, can you ever forgive me? Yeah, after all, you was just looking out for me. I'm sorry I had to leave. Come here, you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna go call my stepdads. All seven of them. <laughs> Are you crying too? Don't look at me! <laughs> Pop, before you head out of town, let's enjoy the time we have together. I'd like that, Jimmy. Now what do you say we take these jokers' guns away and kick the shit out of them? Way ahead of you, kid. Come here! Mm, this is delicious, Cookie. What is it? A little thing I whipped up called Pony Parmigiano. Say, who's the dish, Jimmy? Mind if I take a crack at her? Cheech, uh, I don't know if you want to... Hey, gorgeous. Are you a thief? Because you stole my heart. Cheech, you're hitting on your own brother. I'll take that as a maybe. Well, gang, here's to family. Family! family. To... Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? You know, back in the old days you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone farted. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. <laughs> but I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? <laughs> what would he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. <laughs> what language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. 
Why, just last week I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring! Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Barky, fix me three prancing Mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. <laughs> oh, what happened last night? <clears throat> where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy sh balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> Oh, lovely. That's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it. This is my work phone. I have to. No, you don't. <laughs> Special agent, straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how'd you know? <laughs> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% markup is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with Mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, oh. McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo! Open the door! Tutty got shot in the ass. Again! 
Oh crap, it's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in! Good day, gentlemen. Oh, yo, where's the regular doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your sort and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. <laughs> what picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so hair don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now nah, he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tutti. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick, pick me! me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of yous. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? Oh, of course! Y you're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. It's never gonna work. What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack. Okay, sorry. Where'd you find this get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, oh, crap.
crap, it's Marie. <laughs> Remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no you weren't. Sure I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. <sighs> Great. I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it. Oh, smells like New York back here. Oh, so you're the one who was smoking, Teresa. You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that! Maybe this needle dick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah, the guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my... Is somebody smoking? It's Petey! I knew it! Going to Harvard, bye! Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York! Somebody give him some hay or something! <gasps> Yo, Doc! What gives? Jesus, H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight! Help me out here! <sighs> What the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech. Who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner. Or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this! I think we can totally do this! Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this! It's a beautiful morning in Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? 
It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts. Hey, come home to mama. I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Whoa, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still. Leo, you gotta see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing for three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle, my brother, Polly, the brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out of town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came. On the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, la 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 la
la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la the ancient Italian code of silence known as Omerta required us to keep our mouths shut. It all started back in Sicily, where the mob made an example of anyone who opened their mouth. Like this guy. All he did was ask a cop for directions. After that, no one ever talked to the cops. In fact, no one ever talked to anyone just to be on the safe side. Even if my great grandpa's mm. pants were on fire, he still would have kept his mouth shut. Hell of a guy. The whole village grinded to a halt. They had to come up with some way to communicate. Why Italians talk with their hands. Because of Omerta? I don't think that's true, Pop. Oh, yeah? Ow! You know what that means? Or did I stutter? Uh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. This corset's so tight, my boobs are coming out my back. Why are we here? I gotta support my boss's side business, because he supports my Wednesdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays off. Dinner where someone gets whacked. It's like I'm back home, except I'm dressed like an asshole. Oh, no! Someone shoot him, Rancher Dan! Ooh, the cavalry's here, albeit unscripted. Roll with it, everyone! Don't mind me, I'm just here to see. Buffalo, jump, Toby. You can't wear that. I can't even wear that. Jimmy, I'm afraid I have some pressing news. Great! Tell us at home! Let's go! Yeah! For Canada, where white people still think wearing these is okay! Oh, dances with horse make big, I'm angry. Run many paces. Am I right, guys? Ugh. All right, McCool, so what's this news? There's no easy way to say this. Oh, crap, we're moving again. Who'd you rat out this time, hop-along sack of shit? I, for one, welcome a fresh start. That's because you got caught in class with a sleep boner. It's your grandmother in Sicily. No! I'm afraid she's dying. No! Why, God, why? <laughs> that woman is insane. Roll out the fluffy red carpet, Jesus, because there's an angel coming. Take me instead, Lord. No, take me. Take them both, God, please. I know your pain. I was absent when my own dear grandmother passed. They say she shrieked my name as the grizzly bear tore into her. <laughs> When I heard about your Nona, I resolved to bring her here for a final farewell. <laughs> Are you out of your freaking mind? I don't want to see her. I hate that bitch. She's the whole reason I had an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. You were also upset when I said she was dying. She's family. You gotta make a big show in case God and all the neighbors are watching. But if she finds out we ratted on the mob... Yeah. We. Don't worry. Nona's practically comatose. She'll have no idea where she is. I'm not taking that chance. We gotta be ready to make her think it's the old life. No witness protection, no cops, nothing's changed. That might be tricky. She lands in two hours. <gasps> I'm coming, Jesus! All right, 
one more time. <gasps> Forget it about it. What the hell's wrong with you? Sorry, I'm nervous. You heard me say it like a million times. <laughs> it's here. See, what did I tell you? Shh. Jimmy? Uh, that's right, Nona. It's Jimmy. Winnipeg Jets, she's up! That means you're up, Serpico. Make it good. Forget about it, Internet. So, Jimmy, I see you bring a the whore. Hello, Nona. And a the crybaby. <laughs> Santa Lucia, don't feed this one after midnight. And here's a the fat one. Hi, Nona. It's nice to see. <laughs> Maroon! Da eat or the leaves! Evening, Nona. You're looking lovely. Okay, Nona. Good to see you. Let's get this visit over with. Hey, wait for your cousin. What cousin? What cousin? Says the porky pig. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Apronia, come meet Dante's Inferno. You know that's your cousin, right? Technically not. I'm a McDougal. Too bad. It's way hotter if she's your cousin. Okay, let's get you home, Nona. You must be tired. Tired of your face. We no go home. I want to see Statue of Liberty. Uh, Nona, obviously we're in, uh, New York, which we are, but, uh, Statue of Liberty's a tall order. Why? This is a city that never sleep. I never take a bath. Oh, we go. You idiot! Apologize to Nona, like the stinking dog that you are. Hey, oh, bada booba! Ha <laughs> ha! reels a sorry there, Nona Malona. Jesus Christ! I don't know why, but I like you. Now take me to Lady Liberty. How you doing, Paisan? I'm Cheech. She look. Smaller? Yeah, uh, budget cuts. Thanks a lot, Obama. We go. Ah, oh, America is so romantic. It sure is. We invented drive through wedding chapels. So, Pietro, you have a sweetheart? No, I just haven't met the right cousin. Girl, I mean girl. <laughs> <laughs> You know that's your cousin's ass you're groping. Ah! Would you stop reminding me? Houses are small. Business bad, Jimmy. No, uh, the mansion's being renovated. This is Petey's house. <laughs> is a Petey in a family business? Yeah, yeah, he's a chip off the old block. Petey, show Apollonia to a room. Don't tell me what to do in my own house! You believe this bitch? No, no. I made eggplant palm just for you. You hungry? Eggplant? No, no, thought you just put cheese on a dirty sock. Uh, <laughs> this'll be your room. Huh, <laughs> plastic sheets. It's not what you think. I'm just a bedwetter. In the village, I always dream of America. Now I am here with handsome cousin, like a dream come true. If dreams came true, I'd be your handsome cuz. Oh, wait! Pietro, will you show Apollonia big banana? Banana? Well, it's kind of yellow and curves left. Oh, you mean the big apple! <laughs> I thought you meant my penis. Whoa, that's the first time I've ever said penis in front of a girl. You don't know what I'm saying, do you? Penis, 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 penis. I like you. Old hag wouldn't know good eggplant palm if it smothered her in her sleep with my favorite pillow. No, no, just because she spat it back onto her plate doesn't mean she didn't like it. Jimmy, I think if she finds out, she won't tattle. She's family. 
She's Sicilian! We broke Omerta, that sh runs deeper than blood! Ah! I smell the rat. <gasps> oh no, that's the whore's excuse for cooking. Where's all of your friends, Big Sheet? It's Big Shot. I know what I say. No friends to pay respect to Nova. Something not a right here. Put her in a bath, drop in a toast, about a boom, pine box back to Italy. If she's on to us, we gotta send her back right now. If we send her back, she'll know we're onto her being onto us. Gina, run a bath. I'll get the toast. <laughs> oh, eggplant parm. So, you want a way out of this? I know just the guy to talk to. Who? I said. Who's that now? You know who I mean. It's. Thank you. Ah, I said Timmy. Who's Timmy? You know, your friend there, Geronimo. Toby? That's the guy, Tony. <laughs> oh, Gina, you're gross. Still tastes better than that fucking eggplant. Your mystery dinner murder theater, Tippy. Toby, as long as it starts with a T. Shut up, Robbie. It's gotta be a New York gangster theme. Ooh, I love gangster stories. New Jack City, Boys in the Hood, the Goonies. What Goonies? I'm talking a mafia. Cheech, this is not a good idea. How dare you come into my nephew's house and disrespect me like this? I go to kitchen, I mind my business. You see, Taco, that's the kind of authenticity we're looking for. Don't you worry. Authenticity is our new middle name at the Eastside Authenticity Players. Eastside Toby, this fighting's gone on too long. We gotta bring the families together, end the bloodshed, and eat some pasta! Blood is shed, uh, macaroni, mamma mia, Abba's the best. That's insulting and kind of racist, but you got the job. Oh, Jimmy, you won't be disappointed. That's not true, but whatever. Don't moosh this up. The only thing I'll be mooshing are the Italian peas. I think I want to kill him already. That's good. Use that. <laughs> Aw, did you come running to me because you're scared of the thunder? No, I come because you scared of a thunder. Thank you. Mm, I like you. I like you too, Apollonia, but we're cousins. Cousins? It's just a word. But it's forbidden, except in Kentucky and parts of Manitoba. What about Regina? You know we're not in New York? Yes. I no understand, but I no care. i uh, sorry. I cannot. I know, it's wrong, but it feels so right. What can we do? Ah! I get the new sheets. And pajama bottoms. Hey, everybody, look. It's Jimmy Spaghetti and the Spaghetti family. And you brought the little meatball. Ooh, she looks mad. Toby, I told you to call us the Falcone family. It's very important. I thought about it, Jimmy, but Falcone is just too on the nose. Are you kidding me? Jimmy, you're Scottish. I worked in Italy, Ceramic Tile Bazaar, for three years. I know a thing or two about the land of grout and marble. Get those cotton balls out of your mouth. You look like an idiot. But that's what Marlon Brando used in his portrayal of the... Brando's not even Italian. And for the record, neither is Bratwurst. And why is there a Mexican flag up there? <laughs> Jimmy, we're walking a tightrope here, and it's windy. Careful not to blow your cover. Which cover? That I'm a gangster or I'm not a gangster? I don't know. My mind's racing to keep up. Machu Picchu! Seriously, it's way better if you don't talk. 
Jimmy, this is all terrible. Nana's not gonna buy it. Oh, is that Al Pacino? I'm gonna get an autograph. Hey, Jimmy Spaghetti with the great big belly. Eat! You want more ranch dip for your pizza bagels? Look at that Larry Linguini! Who let such a snake into this gathering of honorable men? Toss him out with the rest of the garbage! Wink, wink, I hope you're enjoying the show! Of respect? Show of respect, right, Nona? I go to the ladies' room and drop, how you say, uh, cookies, eggplant, parmesan. I think she's buying it. We're gonna be okay. We're more than okay. I'm Facebook friends with Pacino! Hey, everyone! We just got married! What? <laughs> and someone killed Larry Linguini! <gasps> My baby boy's married to his freaking cousin! We have to abort. I agree. I do not want a two-headed cousin baby running around. No, Jimmy, the mission. First, we got to break up this marriage before Nona finds out and tells half of Sicily that Apollonia married Petey Falcone. By the way, Jimmy, my congratulations. Little something for the happy couple. Aw, you shouldn't have. Will you forget about that? Just go keep Nona in the bathroom. Cook, you scare some sense into Apollonia. I'll go beat the shit out of Petey. Look, I know in the old country, people marry the cousins all the time. But you don't want to be married to a pimply chronic masturbator. Plus, look at you and look at him. You're so beautiful. And he's... he's... Uh, handsome? A strong? What are you, a crackhead? The guy's a loser! What is a loser? A gavone, an idiot, a bonehead! I have to love him, but you got a choice. Ah, see, see. Oh, one a second. Don't you disrespect my husband! Ow! Hey! What? Just making sure he's sharp. Hey, and a Nona! The big boss says you gotta stay in the washroom, uh, cause a Larry Linguini's killer is still running around. Bada bada bingo! Such a nice boy. Shut up your face. Sulfur Mountain, that is unholy. I know you're disappointed you weren't at the ceremony, but our love just couldn't wait. I don't give a crap about your ceremony. She's your cousin! You bang him. You don't marry him. What is this? Kentucky? No, it's Regina. And guess what? My wife knows, and she doesn't care. You told her this ain't New York? Are you nuts? Oh, God, I gotta talk to Cookie. Cheech, keep Petey away from Apollonia! You can't keep us apart! We're family now! Again! Still! You know, I'm starting to like this chick. I think she really loves my boy. Welcome to the family! She was already in the family. Don't ruin this, Gina. Hey, Jimmy Spaghetti, I need a to talk to you. Not now, Toby. How dare you disrespect me at the wedding of your son to my daughter? What did he say? Nothing. Kiss me. Daughter, what the fuck are you talking about? The wedding threw me off. I had to improvise, which is why we're now called the Eastside Authenticity Improvisational Players. Another domain name I have to check. Never mind the wedding. But this union will bring our families together. What the wedding? If your boy hurts a my girl, I'll kill you, Jimmy. Please, adieu. Why you want to be married? Look at me. I'm free as a bird. I got my options open. Sky's the limit. You live alone in a basement. Never let it go. You hear me? Never let it go. And name your firstborn after me. I don't care how many heads it's got. Excuse me, everyone. I've always said there's nothing more important than family. And apparently, my son agrees with a vengeance. So, it's my honor to announce the first dance between Petey... Cookie, no! ...and his beautiful and surprisingly stabby bride, Apollonia. Oh, dear God. 
Let's do this, Nona. Stop right there, Petey Spaghetti. You thought you fooled us with this elaborate and unscripted wedding. Well, you didn't. You murdered Larry Linguini. <gasps> Baloney on the married to some monster. This family bring a shame to me. Crime, murder, but no more. No, no, calm down, please. Cosa nostra. No, no, stop! I'm not in the mob anymore. I ratted out my old bosses and now I'm in witness protection in Canada. <laughs> <gasps> Is it true, Jimmy? Is it true, Nona? I'm just a civilian now, a schnook. Nona, so happy. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, Jimmy see the light. Your cover's blown. I'll have you inside the Arctic Circle by morning. That's further north, isn't it? Jimmy, that's so far north, Cheech will probably bang Santa's wife. <sighs> Oh, Jimmy, quick! Jimmy McDougal, everybody! Brought to you by the Eastside Authenticity Improvisational Surprise Ending Players! Bravo! 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 Yes! So, Nona, you're not mad? No, Jimmy. For once, I'm proud of you. But I betrayed Omerta. I no care about Omerta. It's just a big, stupid stereotype about Sicilians. Now I'm gonna go and make a nice pizza pie! <laughs> Does this mean Apollonia and I have your blessing? No! Apollonia no marry the monster! Who kill a Larry Linguini! Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? It's me, Gina. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm not wearing a seatbelt, neither. Blow me. Before Pops became the fattest stool pigeon in history, he was my hero. If there was an award for Father of the Year, Pop would have got it. Dog Francesco says hello. <laughs> Then this happens. So I look at the FBI guy and say, you stinking feds can blow me. I ain't testifying against nobody. Then the man from the fed says, but the mob is gonna kill you and your whole family, Jimmy. You with me so far, kid? I get it, you're turning rat. Just wait, there's more. If you testify, we can give you immunity. Do you know what immunity means? Enough with the fucking puppets! <laughs> oh! Now, Pops is the puppet, and the feds are the ones pulling the strings. This is the thanks I get for saving all your lives. And if you don't think I'm better off dead than living in Canada's icy butt crack, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. You clowns think you can avoid me? We have nap time together every day. Now cough it up. The new kid already took our money. What are you little crap stains trying to pull? Who's this new kid? <sighs> Just give me another wedgie and let me go. Another wedgie? <laughs> Who gave you the first one? Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah! Hide behind the skinniest statue on Earth, dumbass. <laughs> Bad, but for once, I'm innocent. I think the first.
furnace is on the fritz, what's 10 degrees in American? Dunno. Depends on the exchange rate. Apologies for the intrusion, but I'm here to save the day. What's with the pantyhose? It's a unitard. I'm Maple Man. Maple Man? Canadian superhero? Fighting minor infractions and belligerents everywhere? You look unitarded, Captain Leaf. <gasps> Teresa, why are you dressed up as Sapling Girl? Maple Man's trusty sidekick, who's always getting him out of sticky situations? I'm just wearing what they gave me for my job as a booth babe at Regina Comic Con. <gasps> Do you know what this means? Of course not. You'll be working with Bentley Withermoon, the renowned actor who plays Terrence Timber, AKA Maple Man. Sounds like a lot of nerds. I better bring my pepper spray. Teresa, you have to introduce me to him. So much of my belief system is based on the teachings of Maple Man. Well, it's a hundred bucks for an autograph, 300 for a photo, or a thousand to brush his hair. I have to go sell my stamp collection. Hey, can I borrow your brush? Gina. You have irreparably damaged school spirit here at Celine Dion Elementary. Don't worry, our hearts will go on. The only place that'll accept you now, my dear, is Our Lady of Peace School for Wayward Girls. Not the nuns. No! Anything but the nuns! That's right. Enjoy that juice while you still can. <laughs> the only snacks the nuns will give you are warm holy water and stale body of Christ. Yummy! <gasps> Thank you for coming, Mr. McDougal. I came as soon as I got your call. You got a real sultry phone voice. Well, I'm afraid Gina's in a great deal of trouble. Your fancy skeleton statue nearly crushes her, and she's the one in trouble? You got a lot of nerve, Professor. Next thing you know, she'll be blaming you for this hat that I stole off the special ed kid. Well, we talked her down to a one-day suspension. Pretty good for your old man, huh? Just wait till I get my hands on that kid who framed me. Knock out his teeth for me, will you? I miss reading Rainbow for this. Five seconds and I'll be shaking hands with a syndicated television legend. Okay, that's it for today. Maple Syrup Man will be back tomorrow. For some reason. Teresa! Teresa! Introduce me. Uh, Tabitha, I had some notes regarding your booth babing skills. Shall we discuss them over a drink? Sorry, I left my fake ID at home. <laughs> Don't worry. No one asks for ID in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really tired from wincing at people's breath all day. Most girls in your position would leap at the chance to get a few tips from an industry veteran. Sorry you were in the war, but thanks anyway. See you tomorrow. Teresa, you gotta introduce me to- Buzz off, nerd! <laughs> oh, Edie, I didn't recognize you in your pajamas. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Shoot. You ever worried at- I said shoot. Come on, it's your turn. Oh, right. <laughs> you missed. What a loser. Cheech, you ever worry things are slipping out of your control? Yeah, but I got special underpants for that. It's this mystery kid at school. He's haunting me, and I don't even know what he looks like. The kid without a face? How am I supposed to sleep now? Let me tell you, Francis Bacon once said... No, wait, it was Kevin Bacon. He said, knowledge is power. Yeah, I should snoop around, find out who this kid is. Good idea, Cheech. Oh! And if you call me a loser again, I'll slice your f***ing nuts off. Ooh, you're tough, but fair. <sighs> Get the file on the new kid and check the teacher's lounge for snacks. Not in that order. What the hell is this? In case you gotta hack into the mainframe or some shit. Hey, why is my locker open? What the hell is this? It's a picture of the best summer of my life. <gasps> Carmine! I'm back! Oof. That's for getting me suspended. Not that I care, but still. And that's for breaking Celine Dion. <coughs> what was that for? That's because I missed you. I'm impressed. Must have took a lot of determination to track us down. You know, your pop killing my pop and all, it, it gets you out of bed in the morning. That and... I wanted to see you again. Muscling in on my marks was a nice touch. And you're short. Shut up! I grew one and a quarter inches since last summer. 
I mean on the vig, you chiseling mook. I got expenses. Taking a cab all the way from Brooklyn wasn't cheap. The meat is still running. You want to lift to your house? What was I, born yesterday? Come on, I'm gonna find Cheech sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. These vendettas take a lot out of you. Well, good luck finding him. The guy's a phantom. He lives in the shadows and moves as silent as a warm breeze. Hurry up, Gina. Cheech Falcone is getting bored. Anyway, Carmine, I ain't gonna make getting to Cheech easy for you. I wouldn't want you to. Last time I had any real fun was when you and me mixed it up at camp. You mean when I kicked your ass? How do you know I didn't let you kick my ass? And the gloves are off. <laughs> if you say so. I left you a juice box and some crackers. See you soon. You backstabbing son of a whore! Open this door right now and I'll let you keep some of your limbs! Fruit punch. Oh, you remembered my favorite! What's she doing here? Replacing someone who doesn't know how to play ball. Oh, I know how. Just not with yours. Sadly, Tabitha, you lack the talent to portray a convincing sapling girl. Like it takes talent to have a unitard jammed up your butt. I'll have you know I majored in unitards at Juilliard. Come on, Petey. Let's get away from Doctor Who wants me to touch his wiener. But I sold my stamp collection. I told you the furnace wouldn't fix itself. Now the toilet water's frozen. I know, I've been chipping yellow ice all night trying to get my cell phone out. Cheech dropped a deuce and it's just sitting there, mocking me. That's it, I'm calling the repairman. Is Cheech here? Nope. Damn it! Between you and me, you don't really like Cheech much, do you? What are you talking about? He's great! I mean, he's all right. He means well. Actually, he does it, but he's my uncle! What do you want? But if he wasn't around no more, we'd be okay, right? Maybe you would, but who the hell would I hang out with? What, did you kill him? How'd you do it? Me and Ma have a bet. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Holy crap! I was kidding around! You did kill him! Jesus Christ, Gina! I didn't touch him! I haven't seen him since last night! <laughs> it's all my fault! Kid, relax. I saw him an hour ago. He went to them Nerd Olympics with Teresa. Why do you think he was dead? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. And I wasn't crying. What do you mean you can't get here for two days? It's so cold, I can see Cheech's breath. I thought Comic-Con was gonna be a comedy show for convicts, you know? Where every punchline is, don't drop the soap. <laughs> you know who should be in prison? Bentley Withamoon. He almost was, three times, but he always got off. It's ironic, nothing sticks to Maple Man. Why are you sticking up for him? The guy's a pig. He's not a pig. He's the product of the forbidden love between man and Maple Tree. You just can't see the real him past your nerd boner. By the way, you should wear a jock under that costume. Man, I ain't seen so much butt crack since we extorted the plumber's union. Maybe there was something else you did wrong? He fired me because I wouldn't put out! What? Guy sounds like a creep. No respect for the ladies. Yo, space jugs! Let's see if I can come in peace. Cookie, shame on you for even thinking of calling a repairman when you have me. A housewife? Alone? A repairman? Oh, that reminds me of a dirty movie I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Strange. Ah, there's nothing like using your hands to bring back the heat. Good thing I brought my big tool. That was a line in the movie. <gasps> Did you ever appear in- I don't know what you're referring to, Cookie. I'm just here to perform some sweaty, dirty work. That's another line! Ah, you're the Randy Repairman! Damn my gambling days. I knew that video would come back to haunt me. Sir, can I see your wristband? Ah! <laughs> How is this the first I'm hearing about Gambini's kid? What, I gotta tell you every little thing? You do when our lives are at stake. What if he squealed on us to the mob? Then we'd be having this conversation in hell. The day Cheech gets taken out by a six-year-old, I'll eat my shirt. Well, get ready to choke down some polyester, because this kid's the real deal. Got a little crush there, kid? Yeah. I mean, no! Shut up, dumbass! All right, to be continued. 
Now, let's find Cheech quick before we wind up relocated to Yellow Horse or White Knight for some fucking place. <gasps> God, you can almost smell the virginity in here. Hello? I'm down here. How you doing? I'm Gina's friend. That's funny, because Gina doesn't have any friends. Oh, you calling me a liar, Gina's mom? Nobody calls me a liar. Where do you get off? What, did somebody drop a deuce in your cereal this morning? Get dried up old floozy? Oh, yeah, okay, now it makes sense. Come on in and wait for her. So, what's a guy gotta do to get some milk and cookies around here? Oh, you're a hungry little spark plug, ain't ya? <laughs> yeah, hungry for revenge. <laughs> Good one. Hello? Cookie? Nice to finally meet you, Cheech. You're bigger than I imagined. Has everyone seen my movie? Who wants cookies? Hey, where'd you go? Oh my god, oh my god! Hey, you're not Cheech. No shit, you little monster. Oh, Jesus, McCool! Where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <gasps> Hold me, Randy. Tighter. Cookie, get a hold of yourself. Who was that crazed demon child? It was Gina's friend. Oh, that explains a lot. But why was he have to cheat? I don't know. Let's go down to the comic book convention and ask him. A comic book convention? And I get to kill Cheech? Double win! Jeez, I hope Pop's having better luck finding Cheech than I am. Psst. Ow, Gina! That's for locking me in my locker. Thanks for the snacks, though. Hey, can I ask you something? Say you do off Uncle Cheech. What next? Oh, I got plans. I want you and me to run away together. Hit the open road like Bonnie and Clyde. You want to get gunned down in slow motion at the end of an old movie? No, I mean the bank robbing parts. But none of the kissy parts. Ew, you're gross. Maybe the huggy parts. Don't get your hopes up, sicko. But look, do you really gotta kill my uncle? Of course I do. Good luck finding Cheech in this joint. The man's a master of disguise and concealment. He could be standing right behind me and you'd never know. Go, oh, Gina, spot your Uncle Cheech a couple of bucks for a slice, will you? Damn it! I've been looking for you, mister. Not another one. Look, Junior, I know what you're thinking, but I ain't your father. Holy crap, you're even dumber than the legends. Time to put you out of my misery. Yo, look, everybody! It's a midget from Game of Thrones! <laughs> Yeah? They never look as tall in person. But this is official police business. Let me in. Not until I see a wristband, sir. Can we wrap this up soon, sugar cheeks? Oh, I'm getting right as cramp. Oh! What's the meaning of this, you me wannabe? In season one, episode four of The Adventures of Maple Man, you vow to stand against injustice, no matter where it occurred, even if the hour was late and the location less than convenient. If you want to quote the show to me, that's an extra $60. Silence! Maple Man stands for fairness, equality, and decency. You stand for none of those things, you egocentric, misogynist hypocrite! How dare you! How dare you, sir! You have no right to fill the sacred Maple Man unitard. Security? Sure, hide behind your goons. Oh, hi, Jetsy. Ah! Maple Man, thank God you're here. I fell through this table. Uh, would Cheech McDougal please proceed to the information desk? That's the big table near the front door. If you get confused, tell a grown-up you're lost. Uh, over and out. Well, if it ain't Jimmy Falcone. Oh, come on! Look at you, excuse me! 
Cheech McDougal, do not come to the information desk. Repeat, do not make up your mind. Gee, kid, you got the same psychotic spark in your eye as your old man. I also got his propensity for violent blood-soaked revenge. And his inability to whistle. Kid, look, I owe you a huge apology. I'm sorry for what happened with your pops. He was a, well, I won't say a good man. He was a man. Let's leave it at that. You call that half-assed tap dance an apology? You murderized him. He was gonna kill my uncle, then I would have had to kill him back, so we skipped his step. But don't take it out on Cheech. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry. I promised Gina I'd never touch you. Who's worried? But that's nice. She's a good kid. Oh, she's great. Easy there, Romeo. But listen, you kind of already got your revenge on me. How do you figure? Look at me. Look around you. I'm living like a schmuck here. I mean, my life ain't bad, but it's a far fucking cry from good. Know what I mean? Oh, for Christ's sake. For the last time, kid. I never bend your mother. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you ignominious little snot stain. I am a classically trained actor. If it weren't for all the money I make and during these weekends with you halitosis-ridden cretins, I'd never be caught dead in this asinine outfit providing masturbatory fantasy fodder for overgrown adolescent twerps. And furthermore, I hate Canada and Maple Man can gobble my knob! <gasps> Did you get that, Teresa? He's a one-take wonder. And... post! I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! You look fat in that suit. Oh. Teresa! That's not nice. What? Bitch took my job. I told you I wouldn't make this easy for you, so you're gonna have to go through me. You know, for a guy you can't stand, you sure do seem to care a lot about Cheech. Trust me, this is killing me. I'm gonna regret it the next time he opens his mouth. Wait a sec. Does your mother do hoop waxes down at the Korean spa? See what I mean? <sighs> All right. I changed my mind about off and Cheech, but not about... What? That sounds mushy. So, spit it out. Nah, some things are better left unsaid. What are you, chicken? Shut up! I'm no chicken. You're a chicken! Yeah, yeah, I'm rubber, you're glue. Just shut the f up and tell me! <sighs> I didn't change my mind about how much I like you. Um, I'm glad about that. And being glad hurts my face. You make my face hurt too, Gina. So, what do you say you and me shake down a couple of these booths? Why not? These dorks have been bullied all their lives. They know the drill. Hey! <gasps> You're under arrest for assaulting a police officer, young man. It's maximum security juvie for you. It'll be no picnic, my fine friend. Lights out by 10 and only four hours of social media per day. McCool, wait! Aww. Aww. Guess I'll have to take a rain check. Guess so. But those blowjob screws won't keep me down for long. You gonna wait for me? Pah, screw that. That's my gal. Well, son, I hope you picked up some comics to read where you're going. For Canada! A dumping ground for American culture since 1867! I knew it! There is a more north! Yes, Jimmy, and this is where we'll be until I'm certain the elusive Carmine Gambini is no longer a threat. How soon did he give you the slip? Somewhere between the washrooms and the parking lot. That's my boy. Petey, did you see how many hits our Maple Man video got? Yeah, but look what they're calling it. Idiot fan pwned by Maple Man. I can't take this no more. I'm walking home. I'll just head south. How hard can it be? Which way is south? We're so far north, it's all friggin' south! Oh, God! La 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 la
la la Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the New York crime family. Now I'm in witness protection in Canada. But I'll never forget that day. I was forced to leave the only home I've ever known. Cookie, kids, get your butts in gear. Let's get this vacation started. Canada awaits. Daddy, just because we're going overseas doesn't make this a vacation. I ain't denying it. I was in denial. I couldn't face the fact that I was leaving everyone I ever loved and taking my wife and kids with me. Isn't this fun? A family road trip. Who's up for another round of window uppy downy? Up, down, up, down. Whoa. Up, up, he down. always knows what it's gonna do. All right, you'll be under RCMP protection from here on. Off you go. It's cool. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue. Come along, I have blankets and whiskey for all of you. This will warm your cockles. If it's gonna warm my cockles, I'll need a bigger blanket. I'm Special Agent Straight McCool. My mission is to help you assimilate, keep a low profile, and ensure you don't violate our nation's laws. I'm sorry. Violate what? <laughs> what a spirited group. I loved this assignment the minute I was given it. Let the protection begin. Hop in. You gotta be shitting me. And then they took us to this crazy place called Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you are thinking about a vacation up here, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. City, home of the Jews, the body of mobster Paul Vincenzo was pulled from the Hudson River. Foul play is suspected. Hey, look! Paulie the target got whacked. I can't believe it. He was always so careful. I wonder who did it. I'm guessing Vinnie April did it. The Hudson's always been his go-to. Nah, look at the bruises on his face. Must have been Benny the Bruiser. My money's on Timmy, sissy bum. That guy'll f you up. Two ones! Holy craps! Snake Eyes! It was my cousin Sammy! That's the worst nickname ever! No, it's my cousin, comma, Sammy. Comma, Sammy? That's even worse. Your nephew, Nimrod! Snake Eyes Sammy! The guy's in trouble! If we can figure out he did it, so can Paulie's crew! Which means he's about to get whacked! I gotta save him! Ah, he's always about to get whacked. He's a good boy. You know, I still can't believe you stole Cookie from him. Whoa! I didn't steal no one. He was sent to Juvie, and Cookie needed his shoulder to cry on. All I did was show up with a hanky and a salami. You were so sweet, you big lug. You repoed my heart. And you stole mine. And then I stole you that necklace. So I hereby announce my candidacy for student council president. What's your platform? My platform? Thanks for asking, concerned student. If you elect me, I will ban all corporate sponsorship from school grounds. Let's send the message that young minds are not for sale. Who's with me? That was painful to watch. What I have to say is important. I, I just can't get anyone to listen. Oh, little brother, you're so lame. The key to drawing a crowd isn't what you say, it's what you show. Thanks for coming to my brother's president thingy. We love you! And I have loved a ton of you. So I want you all to vote for my brother on the day you're supposed to vote, whenever that is. The issues. Tell them the issues. First off, more corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's no more corporate sponsorship. Oh, it's just one word. It doesn't matter. More bullying. <laughs> It's no more bullying. You have to add the word no. Okay. No more funding for music and the arts.
I got your message, Jimmy. How can I be of assistance? I got a problem. My cousin Snake Eye Sammy whacked Paulie the target. That's a serious accusation. I meant it as a compliment. But trust me, it was Sammy. He left his dice that always come up ones. All us wise guys have calling cards. My dad left an Italian sausage, Cheech left a cocktail onion. My calling card was a calling card. I figured I'd give the grieving family some minutes. I get that. Horse also likes to leave a calling card. Hey, same as Johnny Brand Flakes. You gotta get Sammy out of there. When police guys track him down, they'll torture him to rat me out. How could Sammy know where you are? I texted him. Mom, you have to talk Teresa out of running. She's just gonna embarrass herself. Petey, I think it's great that your sisters finally realize there's more to life than binging, purging, and shopping. Are you sure you're not a little threatened by your chances? Are you kidding? I'm totally threatened by your chances. That's why you gotta get her out of this. Petey, I'm not going to choose one of my children over the other. I love you all equally. You'll just have to make the best of it. Don't say I never do you any favors. I never say you don't do me any favors. Your whole job is doing me favors. I know, I just wanted a good entrance line. Hey, Kaz, guess who? Sammy! Jimmy. Ho -ho! <laughs> hey, everyone, Sammy's here. I'll leave you two to your embrace. But remember, Jimmy, you vouched for him, so you're responsible for him. Hey, how you hey, doing? Good to see you. Hey, Sammy, hey, how's it going? How is the trip, cuz? A breeze. Canadian cops are so freaking friendly. Which reminds me, I got presents for all of you. Cheech, you son of a gun. Petey, you's getting so big. Teresa, holy moly, you must be the little squirt. And Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in a squad car, but may I say, you look like a million. You're so full of it. Keep it coming. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that pasta for Joel that I'm smelling? Your favorite? Welcome to Regina. Stun gun? Just what I always wanted. I'm a huge fan of your work, Cousin Snake Eyes. I can't wait to learn from the master. Ah! I'm all yours, kiddo, as soon as I'm done catching up with the real master. I am humbled to be in your presence. Really? I thought the folks back home would be mad about how I ratted everybody out. Ah, forget the ratting. Concentrate on the killing. You whack Don Gambini, for Christ's sakes. You're a legend. A legend? Really? You kidding me? Your nickname back home is the guy who whacked Don Gambini. Now that's a nickname. So much better than that cousin comma guy. The guy who whacked Don Gambini. It's got a nice ring to it. Wait, you saying I can go back home and they won't whack me? Oh, they'll still whack you, but with respect. Oh, that's so nice of them. But Sammy, I ain't like I used to be. I keep a low profile, stay out of trouble, and now you got it too. Sit down. Let me explain how life here works. Gina, if you're gonna have a stun gun, you gotta use it responsible. Give me that thing. First off, you gotta... Jesus! What's wrong with this? They used to have a safe... Take it! Just take it! Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car. I feel terrible. But you look great. I had to give you something. So, here. Oh, that's beautiful! Wait a minute. Isn't this the same necklace you gave Teresa? No. Mom, I can't find my new necklace. Maybe. <laughs> Sammy, you haven't changed one bit. Neither have you, Cookie. You haven't aged a day since high school. Yeah, those were good times. Remember the time we made out in the confession booth and confessed in real time? How could I forget? It was like, oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh, God, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> And remember that time at junior prom when we kissed on the dance floor and the principal separated us so you gave him a wedgie? It was my very first kiss. And my very first wedgie. Mm. 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 Sammy, get out here! What are you drinking? So, that just happened. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Will you quit talking about my womb? Jesus Christ, you talk! It's not that big a deal. You got a light? I... I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch. That works for shit. All right, let's get down to business. Your ex kissed you, and now you're feeling ashamed and conflicted. 
You know exactly what's going on in my heart. You're truly miraculous. You do know I'm a figment of your imagination, right? You're too modest. Whatever. These feelings you have are completely normal. You fell for Jimmy because he was a bad boy, but he ain't no more. Enter Sammy. And these feelings won't go away unless you do something about them. You think I should tell Jimmy? Hell no! Do you know how Joseph was when I had someone else's kid? Moping and whining all the time? He wouldn't let it go. Always asking, who was bigger, Mary? Who was bigger? Who needs that, Zorus? So what are you telling me? Get it out of your system. Have some fun with a guy. <gasps> you mean commit adultery? I could never do that. Technically, you already have. No, I haven't. When Jimmy gives it to you, you think about Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Carrot Top. I don't know what that's about. The point is, it's a slippery slope. No, there's a big difference between thinking about someone and doing him. I cannot believe the Virgin Mary is telling me to have sex with another man. You're gonna burn in hell anyway, so what are you waiting for? These commandments aren't gonna break themselves. I figured I'd give you a tour. Get you used to your new home. Oh, after that meal, a walk's just what I need. Ain't nothing like that woman's cooking, huh? She's a real keeper. Yeah, cookie's the best. So, you guys happy? Yeah, sure. For real happy? Or I'm just saying that because I'm a married guy and I'm dead inside happy? Closer to the first one? On a scale of one to ten. Sammy, what are you getting at? Whoa, this is the little Italy in this town. Ain't it great? Sometimes we just come here and hang out for hours. How's the food? You kidding me? The place is run by a Chinaman. It won't happen overnight, but you'll adjust. See? Look at them. That used to be us. You're misremembering. We used to sneak up behind wimps like that and take their money. Then we'd force them to tell us where they lived and hold up their parents. Sammy, cut it out. Listen, going straight ain't bad. Especially in a city where there's, like, zero crime. Exactly. It's a freaking gold mine. We're gonna clean up here. No. Look, I pulled a lot of strings to get you into witness protection. Well... One. I only got one string, but I pulled it. So we can't live the old life. Now, come on. Let's go to Little Italy and get an egg roll. This is where I work. It's a good job. A great job. I love this job. Proud of this job. You believe me? Jimmy, this is my bad. I was probably unclear when I explained it. Our policy is that staples must be lined up vertically, not horizontally. That's it. Do you have any idea who this man is? So, anyway, Toby, I was wondering if you could give my cousin a job. You'll just wind up making a fool of yourself. It's not like this is something you even care about. You're the one who'll make a fool of herself. You don't even have a platform. Hello? No, a platform is issues. A president should know this. You don't have any issues. Well, actually, you have lots of issues, but nothing to run on. Politics is a bitch. Bitch. Issues I'm, like, running on. If you elect me your school president, you will get to look at me all the time. And girls, if you don't vote for me, I will so screw you over. Thank you for seeing me, Jimmy. I didn't know I had a choice. Well, you didn't. I was being polite. Although I guess it was rude of me to say that, and for that, I'm sorry. Uh, me too? What's up? The crime rate, Jimmy. And I have no doubt that it's mostly due to your cousin Sammy. You can't prove nothing. Not yet, but it's just a matter of time. If Sammy goes to jail and talks, we'll have to move you to Quebec, and you have enough trouble with English. Do you really want to live somewhere where they speak French? I'm torn. I love their fries, toast, and kissing, but berets make my face look fat. I'm not kidding around, Jimmy. Get him in line, or else. For Canada, with a per capita murder rate only slightly worse than Denmark. I just spoke to McCool. You gotta help me with Sammy. What's wrong? The guy's robbing anything he could get his hands on, and he's gonna ruin everything for us. You're being too hard on him, Jimmy. <laughs> 
Let me see that. It's so much fun, Ma. Best toy I ever got. So this is what a stun gun looks like. So where was I? Oh yeah, Sammy. You're being too hard on him. He's a bad boy, like you used to be. I think you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? Did I say you're jealous? I meant Sammy naked. I mean, how can I help? I can't watch him all the time. So when I'm at work and the kids are at school, you gotta keep an eye on his every move. You gotta be on him like white on rice. If he tries to get you off, you dig in and hold on tight. Where he goes, you go. When he comes- Stop it! What? I don't know. Look, Jimmy, as long as we're on the subject of Sammy, there's something I should maybe tell you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I wish I could have some kind of sign telling me what to do. Guess who just robbed the bank? You idiot! <laughs> now that's what I call a sign. Do you know how much trouble you could get us into? Jimmy, let him go. Let's at least hear his side of the story. Fine. Thank you, Cookie. Okay. I staked out the bank, I hit the bank, I made off with the loot. What a me! Let me at him! Jimmy, stop! He's a reasonable man. Just talk to him. It took us a while to adjust to the rules when we got here. He's your cousin for crying out loud. Blood. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my new doll. Kill him. And in second place with 12 votes... Jason Hitler! Nine! 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 Don't worry, mine Jason. There are better ways to seize power! And your new president, with 33 votes, Peter McDougal! What? How could I not have won? Teresa, you never registered yourself as a candidate. But Petey said he'd do that for me. You didn't do that for me? Politics is a bitch, bitch. <laughs> Whoa! What was that for? Jimmy saves your life, you do nothing but ignore everything he tells you, then you make a pass at his wife, and then you show up with some bimbo! In my defense, I made a pass at his wife and was turned down. That's why I got a bimbo. And what the hell did you kiss me for anyway? It really bothered me. Honestly, Cookie, I've been a wreck about it too. I got caught up in the moment. It was nostalgia. Old times. You look good. And you smelled nice. Knock it off! We may have to move because of what you've done. And as crappy as this town is, this is Canada. Things can always get worse. What are you thinking? I don't know, Cookie. I'm not thinking anything. I don't plan things. They just happen. I'm not smart like you and Jimmy and Cheech. We're out of cheese. Who? Where did all that come from? Sammy robbed the first vagina credit union. He's always been a good boy. No, it's terrible. McCool's already on to him. Sammy's gonna get arrested and we'll all have to move to Quebec City, France! I never liked that, Sammy. We gotta get them their money back, but without anyone knowing it was us who returned it. We gotta somehow break into the bank and make them take it back. The old reverse heist. Nobody freeze! Put your hands down and get up off the floor! Don't do what I say or you'll all get hurt. Exactly. Instead of outlaws, we'll be in-laws. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I'm real sorry about all the trouble I caused. I'll do anything to make it right. You just name it. You're going to help Cheech and I return the money. Did I hear you right? You're going to take perfectly good stolen money and return it to a bank? Those crooks? I've never been so ashamed of this family. Gina. You broke my heart. It's go time, boys. Put on your masks. Too bad the mask store was out of friends' masks. I had my heart set on being Rachel. Rock and roll. Everyone freeze! This ain't a robbery! Underground, you mugs. Now! Nobody be a hero. Now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open a safe, and you're gonna put this money inside it. Have you filled out a deposit slip? It ain't a deposit! Well, if you'd like to make an investment, you'll have to speak with Mr. Fielding. But he's on vacation till Thursday. I just want to give you this money! I can't process anything without an account number. Maybe this'll change your mind. (coughs) 
Well? I can't process anything without an account number. This must be why the reverse heist never caught on. Just take it, will ya? We got made! Dirty screws! What are you doing? I don't know. But we gave the money back! Hi. Yeah, oh, for f**k's sake. No! No! Don't you die on me, Sammy. Not now. Not here. Not like this. Looks like the bastards got me. Those bastards! It was just a matter of time. I lived a reckless life. I took too many chances. Plenty of unprotected sex. Shh. Don't talk. Jimmy, I gotta get this off my chest. When we was eight years old, I swept 20 bucks from my dad and blamed it on you. I know. It's okay. And when we was 14, and you got caught with all that weed, I was the one who hid it in your locker. Shh, 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 save your strength. And when we were 16, and your sister got knocked up, that was me. You really gotta stop now. All this was a long time ago. And yesterday, I made a pass at your wife. Earlier today, too. You should probably die now. Okay. Saskatchewan la 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 How you doing? I'm Cookie McDougal. I used to be Cookie Falcone, wife of Mafia Big Shot, Jimmy Falcone. We was living the good life back then, but I didn't know what was going on. And I didn't want to know, because I knew what was going on. Anyway. Jimmy's Uncle Cheech was giving away mob secrets, so it was only a matter of time before he was six feet under. And I've never been one to wait till the last minute. <laughs> he was such a good man. <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. Don't put red flowers beside red flowers. What's the matter with you? Poor, poor Cheech. I'll never forget his little laugh. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't put food next to a dead body. Get it out of here. <laughs> oh, Cheech. Cheech, Cheech! <laughs> Wait, get back here. Give me a crab cake. Oh, it's dry! Cook, I got noose. I know, Jimmy. It wasn't your fault. You did everything you could, but Don Gambini is an unbending man. He bent when he hit the pavement, I'll tell you that. These crab cakes are dry. Hey, who died? Holy crap! Cheech, you're alive! I'm so happy! Jimmy, you got the Don to call off the hit? Well, yes and no. Mostly no. See, I threw the Don out a window. Everyone wants to whack me, so we're moving to Canada. Ah! And that's how we wound up living here in Regina. Regina. Saskatchewan. But if you think living here is going to change us, you can go f yourself. Forget about it. She meant to say forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh.
welcome, my son. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. Jimmy Falcone. Jimmy Falcone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not on the list. You're so not on the list. Maybe this'll change your mind. Jimmy, you've done terrible things in your life. Murder, assault, trying to bribe your way into heaven. Okay, try Jimmy McDougal. I don't think so. <coughs> Are you all right? Do you need some water? We'll give you water. Sparkling or holy? <coughs> Wow, that could have been terrible. What happened? You got a wiener stuck in your throat. I tried giving you mouth to mouth, but I just kept pushing it further in. So I gave you the behind lick. Cheech, I was at the gates of heaven, and they wouldn't let me in. They said I'd done terrible things with my life. Who the hell are they to judge? I don't know, Cheech. It seemed so real. Like I was actually there. Let me ask you something, Jimmy. You ever wear a jacket you haven't worn in a while, and you find a $100 bill in the pocket? I don't know, I guess. Well, that did not happen to me, but... I did find Donnie the Irishman's ear and a yo-yo in my pocket. Get the hell out of here. A yo-yo? Yep. Hey, an alley. I better take a leak. You never know how far to the next one. We would like to buy some marijuana, please? All right, let's see the money. You just took our money. You calling me a thief? Let's beat the crap out of him. What's taking him so long? Cheech, come on, let's go. Thanks, mister! You saved our lives! What am I gonna do? Not save your lives? They got a special place in heaven for people like you. Thanks again! <sighs> Jimmy, you ever been in an alley that didn't smell? Hey, what happened here? I saved some kids from getting their asses kicked. I done something good. I done good too. I drowned a spider. Look at that. All that reefer going up in smoke. Hey, we're like those two stoners from the movies, Cheech and Jimmy. I guess we ought to tie these guys up. You got a rope? Yeah, in my Boy Scout survival bag. They let you in? They told me the cutoff was 35. I know. I used the yo-yo. Oh, man. Look at that. Another ear. And it's also a left. Whose jacket is this? Okay. First of all, we have to tenderize the meat. How do we do that? You try. Now what? We order a pizza. And a therapist. Petey, I was watching MTV. I want to watch the news. I want to watch real teen grandmas. Those shows are stupid. Nuh-uh. I want to find out if Amber's going to deliver today or if she's still grounded. I stand corrected. I gotta say, it felt really good helping those drug-buying frat boys. It was almost heroic. Just think how you'd feel if you'd done it on purpose. Petey, put on Teletoon. The coyote and the running bird show is on. I bet this time the bird gets eaten. And last night in downtown Regina, a vigilante broke up a drug deal. A vigilante? How cool is that? Hey, that looks like... A good job by some good citizen. Police claim the dealers were tied up with a yo-yo. So let's go to the man on the street, vigilante. Epic or not epic? Epic! Because a vigilante right here in Regina... That's gonna bring tourists, because they know they'll be safe. It's also the Cabbage Festival. So double epic! Correct! Not epic. You go to hell! Epic! He's protecting our children, keeping drugs off the street. That's epic. Keeping drugs off the street, not epic. Vigilante, epic! And he did it with a yo-yo. He's the yo-yo vigilante. I just came up with that. Now over to Brick Fitman with sports. Epic! It's not even game day, and fans have come out in droves to support the Yo-Yo Vigilante. Give me a V! V! Give me an I! I! Give me a J! J! Who wants Yo-Yo? Get your Yo-Yos. Who wants Yo-Yo? Ow, my eye! My teeth! My baby!
believe this, Cheech? The whole town's talking about us. They love us. Unbelievable. Just for beating up a bunch of bikers. I used to beat up people all the time. Nobody loved me. They called me the assailant. Or that guy. I didn't like that. They would point and say, that guy. Would it have killed them to have learned my name? I got a feeling this could be a chance for me, Cheech. I mean, maybe there's a reason I nearly choked on a weenie. Maybe I can be a real hero. What about me? Can I be, uh, what do you call it, boy toy? You mean boy wonder? I don't know. What was Robin? Boy toy. Okay, not that. How are we gonna do this, Jimmy? What if we don't see no more bad guys? Oh, we'll see them. Or better yet, they'll see us. Oh my, I am so drunk! Why would I leave my fancy mansion with so much money and expensive jewelry for someone to rob from me in my defenseless drunken state? I am far too drunk to ever fight back if someone tried to take my wads of cold, hard, untraceable cash. Why or oh why would I come to a seedy bar such as this? It's like I'm asking for it. It's as if I'm saying, please, rob me. Take heed, stranger. We don't want nobody to taking advantage of your defenselessness condition. They might steal all that fine jewelry so loosely hanging from your neck. I think I will go outside to the alley, kind sir. I feel the need to throw up from the large amounts of alcohol that I have consumed. Barf! Barf! Hey, rich guy. You've been yo-yoed, punk. <gasps> Sounds like trouble. Let's roll. Hey, Jimmy. We're like that cop team, Starsky and Cheech. assure you that this is not acceptable behavior by any citizen of Regina. We are the Mounties, and we will catch this. Yo-Yo Vigilante. He will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Why do you want to prosecute him? He's doing your job better than you. Because the law clearly states... Why can't the Mounties arrest these crooks before the Vigilante? Well, I don't think the Yo-Yo... Yo, yo. What do you got against the yo-yo? Is there a drug problem in Regina? Why have yo-yos been banned from schools? How often do you mount your horse? Finally! Regina has something Saskatoon doesn't. We have the only vigilante hero in the great province of Saskatchewan. What do you think, Jimmy? Epic or not epic? I bet he's just a regular guy who puts on his pants one sleeve at a time. I wish I was more like him. Prowling the streets at night, making my own rules, getting kisses from women I'm not related to. So you like this guy, huh? You think he's gonna get into heaven? He's already in heaven, Jimmy. This is Regina. No, Toby. This is heaven's nutsack. But it deserves to be safe. I heard he's 19, 6'4", blonde hair, and has his own car. A lady at the market told the cashier that her cousin saw him, and he's actually 38, gives foot massages, and cries when it rains. No, he's 19, and he's perfect for me. No, he's 38, cares how your day was, and never misses the ball. Now go to your room. Hey, what are you all talking about? What everybody in town is talking about. The yo-yo vigilante. I so want to make out with him. You put that thought out of your mind right now, little lady. That's sick. I mean, the man's a criminal. That's where I'm torn on this whole deal. On the one hand, he's busting crooks, which makes him a gavon. On the other hand, he's breaking the law, which I respect. I would just like to meet him for one night. He said stop saying that. Mwah. You're daddy's little girl. To the yo cave. I know you're the yo-yo vigilante. Petey, I admit to being a yo-yo dieter. I just can't shake those last 80 pounds. But a vigilante, that's crazy talk. Oh, is it? All right, you caught us. But it just sort of happened. We didn't plan it. We were a little drunk, 
It was an accident, but your mother and I still love you. Oh, wait, wrong speech. All right, how'd you know? Every sound in this house travels through those vents and into my room. Yeah? Well, if you think you heard Gloria from a car wash in here the other night, you did not. So you admit you're a vigilante. You rat us out, and I'll come at you with the full force of a 68-year-old man. Rat you out? Oh, contraire. I want to be the Q to your James Bond, the Morgan Freeman to your Batman, the Elton to your John. I want you to use my crime-fighting stuff. Check this one out. It's a modified stud finder that identifies the guilty and the criminally insane. Hey, it works! This is my masterpiece. Laser farting gum. It's perfect if you're being chased. Try one. What does it do? Give me your fink. I like it. Plus, there'll never be any doubt who dealt it. The Mountie wants to see us right away. Hang on, I haven't shown you my best one. The holographic lady. How does that fight crime? Who cares? I'm sorry to drag you out at this time of night, but it's about the yo-yo vigilante. I think I read something about that. Some handsome hero running around town, stopping bad guys and thumbing his nose at you feds. He's no hero. It's against the law to take the law into your own hands, and I aim to stop him. Go stop him. What's it got to do with us? I need your experience. As you may know, the legendary Take Me Diamond is on display at the Regina Museum of Stuff, and I want you to steal it. Now you're talking my language. Not really steal it, of course. I want you to break into the museum and attempt to steal it. When the vigilante arrives to stop you, I will swoop in and arrest him. You see, gentlemen, sometimes it takes a criminal to catch a criminal. Ah, oh, man, you had to go and gay it up. What's in it for us, McCool? A chance to feel good about doing the right thing, Jimmy. Something I believe you really, really want. You can't tell me what I want, what I really, really want. All right, but you owe us. See you there at midnight. Midnight it is. For Canada! And getting antiquated lyrics stuck in your head! Come find me, my hero. What the? What are you doing, young lady? Mom! You get in the house. That's so unfair. I hate you! And get me some batteries. There's some in my nightstand next to my... Never mind, I'll get it. All right, I'll be right over there. When I give the signal, you move in on the diamond. That's when the vigilante will surely make his move. I hope we catch those guys, Jimmy. How are we gonna catch those guys? We are those guys! Right, well, if I catch you, I'm gonna let you go. You're my nephew, for Christ's sake. No one's catching anybody. It's really simple. All we gotta do is sit here until morning, because nobody's showing up. Hey, look, it's Gina. Shut up. McCool can't know Gina busted in. McCool, look. There's a hot girl in a bikini down the hall. She's getting away. My goodness. The vigilante is a woman, of course. That's why we couldn't find her. We were only looking for a man. How sexist of us. How un-Canadian. How despicable. And look at that ass. Madam, you're under arrest. Gina, what the hell are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm taking that diamond. What the hell are you doing here? What are you going to do with a giant diamond? I'm going to fence it. Duh. No. I'm gonna wind up fencing it for you, cause you don't know any fences. It'll be just like the time you got the hamster and I wound up feeding it, cleaning its cage, walking it. Then when you didn't want it anymore, I'm the one who had to drive it out to a farm in the country. But Pop... Get home. But... Now! Man, when I grow up, I'm gonna let my children steal whatever they want. She's gonna make a damn fine mom someday. Oh no, McCool's coming back. Okay, quick. What happened? The vigilantes got us. Where were you? We could have been hurt. Yeah, ow. It's the damnedest thing. The bikini lady just disappeared. Then I got a call from my captain saying they've captured the vigilante. What? It was your boss from the tourism bureau. He confessed. A Toby something. I did it! It was me! I'm the vigilante! <laughs> and visit Regina. The hell is that idiot kid doing? I don't know. Me neither. Whoa, sweet. For once, I'm not the dumber guy. This is beer, Cheech. How
How could they have arrested Toby? Not only is he not the Yo-Yo Vigilante, he's the nicest guy in the world. That kind of hurts my feelings, Jimmy. It's like the whole world has gone topsy-curvy. I try to do good so that I can redeem myself and a nice guy goes to jail because of it. They'll eat that kid alive in there. Cheech, our next act of vigilantism is busting Toby out of prison. It's so exciting to be bad again. Or good. Whichever this is. So, a new plan unfolds. Oh, for the love of it. Go outside, you little freak. Give me your wallet. All right, all right, here. Scream for help or I'll shoot. Help! Here, go home, you're useless. Teresa, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. Just meeting guys. You're trying to meet the vigilante. I told you he's too old for you. Teresa Maria Falcone, is that a gun? It's just a water pistol, see? Son of a bitch! It's a real gun! No wonder it kept leaking. Give me that thing. You get in the house, you're grounded. God, that's like so unfair. Shake it off, Cookie, shake it off. It's just a gunshot wound, you've had worse. Help, help, I've been shot. I need a vigilante. Nothing. Now. now, we chew. Lock and load. There's a ton of guys in here. How are we gonna find ours? The modified stud muffin finder. You want to buy some memorabilia? I got OJ jerseys. I got bubblegum cards. Gloves. They're hard to get on, but they come off easy. How about a knife? Where'd I put that thing? Damn, I can never find that knife. Did you know he was a football player before he was a criminal? Hey, come here. Come on, come closer. Let me put this gun in your mouth, and I'll write you a song. Come on. Just for fun. I've been drinking. What could go wrong? Jimmy, don't look. But I think that guy's wearing a wig. We'll never find Toby with this thing. Everyone in here is a criminal, except the guy we're looking for. Then we reverse the polarities. Star Trek? A few. Hey, you're the two fellows who got me put in here. I didn't do anything. I was just jogging with my metrosexual man bag. You think I haven't used that one? I invented I didn't do it. His story checks out. And all I was trying to do was give you back your stupid monocle. Here. His story, too. Yeah, and I'm in here for trying to save a dog from Michael Vick's car. I don't get it. Everyone I put away was innocent. I finally try to do some good, and it all goes bad. And why am I in my underwear? Jimmy, look. It's the fish man of Alcatraz. Swim! Swim like the wind! We gotta find all the people we arrested and set them free! Not me, Jimmy! <laughs> I'm already free! This is where I belong! These are my people! And now I beat you alive! And then Toby eats us. Man, can you imagine if that happened? Jimmy, you are so high. <laughs> Shut up! Don't make me laugh! <laughs> Stop! So what do you think? Should we tie these guys up? Are you out of your mind? Then the whole story could come true. We gotta get out of here before we do something good by mistake. What about heaven? Some people are put on this earth to do good, Cheech. Let's get out of here before any of them come and arrest us. That sure was a crazy story, Jimmy. But let me tell you something. I am the demon Goblin. Knock it off already.
Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, formerly Jimmy Falcone. I used to be a big shot in the New York Mafia until I turned rat to keep from being whacked. It wasn't easy turning on my old friends, but them turning on me first made it a little easier. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell my family we had to go into witness protection. So, guys, I got something important to say. You know how all my friends are trying to kill me? Yes, Daddy. It's all you ever talk about. You really shouldn't bring your work home with you. Well, I was thinking, to fix the problem, maybe we should leave town. What? I hate you! But I'm Glass Campo! We love it here! No freaking way! For once, I agree with your idiot uncle! No freaking way! <laughs> okay, let's move. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina... Regina... Saskatchewan. But if you think it's going to keep this family from sticking together, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Okay, you, elephant man, your pony didn't come in, you're into me for 500. Dollface, you done all right, you got three big ones coming. This ain't been your week, Randy. Your no-show puts you in a hole for 10 large, and I want something now. This just ain't satisfying. But in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. No, thank you for calling Principal Pistagas. Do you know what your daughter did? I just got off with the principal. Got off with the principal. <laughs> this is serious! Gina's suspended for a week. Apparently, she's been selling candy to other kids, which is forbidden on school property. Look, I'm sure she has a good reason. It was probably just to make money. Hey, Ma, guess what? I was sent home early for good behavior. Oh, and how do you plan to explain the rest of the week, young lady? Busted. Damn straight you busted. Your principal called. No TV for a week. Pissed again! You done? Uh-huh. <sighs> Teresa, can we have a girl talk? Of course. I'm just glad you're finally admitting that you're a girl. A guy starts one Twilight fan club and he's branded for life. I need help with a girl. That girl. <laughs> now, if she has bad taste, too, you got it made. I can't even bring myself to talk to her. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Coming to your big sister for advice on love. All right, Petey. I'll have you banging her in no time. I was hoping to carry her books, but whatever works. First thing we need to do is get this girl to know who you are. But she can't know the real you or she'd set us up on fire. You've got to be strong, confident, sure of yourself. Okay, strong, confident, sure of myself. You think she'd like that? Petey, women don't like wimps. They want to be swept off their feet by a dominant, rock-hard son of an oil baron. What? Just go over there and be aggressive. She's yours for the taking. I'm strong, tough, alpha. Strong, tough, alpha. Hey! What? Uh, love me? Wow. Just, wow. That's it. My entire stash. You clean me out. No TV for a week, young lady. Never do something like this again. You've embarrassed the whole family. Come on, no one's really embarrassed. It's just a figment of speech. It's not that. How am I ever gonna learn to be a no-good hustler if I ain't got no role models? <laughs> you got me, don't you? But you're all washed up. Washed up? You know, I still got a thing or two I can teach you. 
For example, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Whoa, whoa, this Canadian candy is primo stuff. You can't even get this in the States. Try it. First taste is free. It's all free. We just took it from you. My God, he's choking. Someone call an ambulance. What's 911 in Canadian? Holy mother of God, that is good. It's better than good. It's, what's a word that means better than good? Oh, what's all this racket about? A man can't hear his own pornography. Try this. It's Canadian candy. I thought Pam Anderson was Canadian candy. Maron, this stuff's better than anything we got back home. Fat Americans are paid through the nose for this stuff. Hold it, hold it. I'm getting an idea. It's coming, it's percolating, it's percolating, it's dripping, dripping. Got it! We'll smuggle this stuff into the States and make a fortune. We'll take prohibition to a whole new level. All right, boys, you're off the hook. This is the thing I've been looking for. Something to get my blood flowing. What do you think, Cook? Mm. Oh. Passport. See, Jimmy? I told you bribing a border guard would be a snap. Some suspicious looking boxes, but there's nothing we can do. They're taped shut. <laughs> Great to be back in the old U.S. of A. Hey, everyone. I'm Captain Candy Pants. Come and get your candy in my pants. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, keep going. Dig deeper. Scram, we're taking over. This is our turf now. But I always work here. I'll give you a free taffy pull. I got your taffy pull right here. <laughs> You're all working for me now. You got a problem with that? Like taking candy from a baby. And then selling it to another baby. Here's your taste, boss. The hell you doing in fur coats? I told you to keep a low profile. You're gonna get us all pinched. It's in my wife's name. What did I just tell you? Not too bright, but the good little learners. You know, I haven't felt this alive since that day I got stabbed at the racetrack. Yeah, those were good times. Mister, I'd like four of everything. Looks good. Cheech, give me stuff. There you go, kid. The finest uncut cocoa solids Canada has to offer. Don't do them all at once. Thanks, but I'm not the one who needs advice. We're shutting you dirtbags down! Freeze! Food and Delicious Candy Administration! You're under arrest for supplying a weak-willed American populace with treats from a different and therefore inferior country! I was framed! I'll wait for you, Jimmy! I can't believe how much this thing vibrates. Take your time, Jimmy! What in God's name is wrong with you? Uh, I don't know. I try and I try and I try. I play the bad guy, I play the good guy every day. I wake up and I say, today's the day they'll get it. But do you? No, we don't know. What more do I have to do? I mean, really, you tell me. What more must I do for you to at long last get it? I don't know. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Maybe if I can just understand what goes on in those warped little minds of yours. Why would you risk everything for just a few hundred dollars? Jimmy told me to! McCool, you wouldn't understand. Try me. I miss the action. I sit around the house being a dad. I go to work and have a job. What kind of life is that? But something like this, it gave me that adrenaline rush I used to get every day in the old life. Is that all? Well, why didn't you say so? Jimmy, if you want an adrenaline rush, I know just the thing. You gotta be shitting me. This, my friend, is action. 
Looks more like a bunch of dusty guys trying to put the moves on farm animals. On the surface, perhaps, but look deeper, Jimmy. Imagine it. You're on top of a bull, hanging on for dear life. Your blood is boiling in your veins, adrenaline flooding your brain. Your only thought, to best the beast before he takes your life. You don't hear the roar of the crowd flowering their adulation upon you. You can't hear them chanting. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. No, they're chanting McCool, McCool, McCool. Jimmy, Jimmy. McCool, McCool. A hundred bucks says Jimmy, Jimmy. Another hundred says I kick your ass. Jimmy, I don't gamble for money. That's what gambling is. But if you insist on humiliating yourself, I will wager you for honor. Great. How much is that in American? The loser must, in a clear baritone, extending from the diaphragm, declare that the other is a better man than himself. You're on. I got one question. If a man does it to a girl sheep, that's not gay, right? I mean, the church is okay with that. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Hello? What do you mean, hello? I've been trying to reach you for two days. I figured I'd be your one phone call. Cookie, calm down. McCool was my one phone call. They took my cell phone, and by the time I got it back, I forgot. What? Oh, you forgot. I already told the kids you were dead. Gina, your father's alive. Put his cigars back where you found him. I just can't catch a break. Hello? Is this the guy who said, and I quote, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Well, you did get caught, and now I'm smoking all your cigars. And that's what you get for cutting me out of my own scam. Cookie, who was that? Jimmy, the whole family's going to hell in a handbasket because of you. Look, Cook, I'm sorry. I'll be home as soon as I can. But I'm at a rodeo, and I gotta prove to McCool that I'm a better man than myself. Could you just say you're at a strip joint, you fat f What did she say? The usual. <laughs> I'm not sure about this, Teresa. Petey, really? This is how you have to dress if you want girls to notice you. It just feels a little busy. Listen, Dum Dum, I watch a show called The Way of the Pickup, and the guy who hosts it, Enigma, says if you want to get the girls, you gotta dress like a schizo freak. It's called peacocking. Well, I refuse to follow the advice of some perverted charlatan. My dignity is too important. He's been with 482 different women. Should I add a top hat? Okay, Petey, Enigma says that 90% of becoming a successful pickup artist is learning to overcome your fear of rejection. And to do that, you need to get rejected a lot. Teresa, I could write a book about being rejected. In fact, I have. But it was rejected. You're gonna ask out every girl who walks past you, and you're gonna get rejected so many times, you'll never care about it again. But what if one of them accepts? Petey, if you're not gonna take this seriously... Back off, bitch! Those shoes are mine! <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am, would you like to go on a date? Hello there, miss. You look lovely today. Excuse me, but I, I, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, Teresa's right. This isn't so bad. Who cares if they don't like me? It's very freeing. I'm a bedwetter. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I masturbate all the time. All the time. Hey, you want to play with my boa? Why, yes, I would, young man. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. It's okay, honey. I saw you. It's very sexy. Ah, sh. You sure you want to go through with this, McCool? I'm not gonna go easy on you. It's not my style. So I'll give you one last chance to back out. McCools don't back out, Jimmy. They thrust in. Okay, it's your funeral. I just got one question. What's with these freaking pants? Me? I like them. I enjoy the draft. Woo! Ha-ha! <laughs> Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Yeah! 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 Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Yee-haw! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Okay? 
I can't take it no more, Cheech. My face is cut, my muscles are torn, my ribs are cracked, and there's no skin left on my ass. You saying you're giving up? Jimmy, you can. You'd have to tell McCool he's a better man. Plus, you can still win, because a bull riding's worth more points than all the other events combined. How's that for exposition? I don't know. Maybe I can pull it together for one more event. Watch this, Jimmy. No hands! <laughs> Toughest, most manliest man in the whole wide world. McCool. Yes. I can't watch this. You are a better man than I. Thank you, Jimmy. It takes a big man to say that. And I think it's safe to say you found the action you were looking for. Oh, and one more thing. I found something I believe is yours. Hey, Jimmy. He just handed you your ass. him! Pops! Pops! What was the rodeo like, huh? What did that copper's stupid face look like when he saw you're the biggest, baddest guy out there? Did you ride the horse like this? Huh? Or like this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I pretty much just rode the horse the normal horse riding way. Wow. I started to think that maybe you'd lost all your moves, that you'd gone soft, you know? But you sure showed me cool, didn't you, Pops? Yeah, I sure did. Too bad you couldn't have been there to see it, because turns out I did so well, so perfected it, that they decided there will never have to be another rodeo ever again anywhere, ever. Thank you so much for walking me home, Petey. It's become such a dangerous neighborhood. You live between a church and a police station. Well, you never know. Well, I guess I should be heading off. No, no, stay. I'll make some cocoa. Um, I'm not sure this is appropriate. Well, why wouldn't it be appropriate? I suppose it wouldn't be if something untoward were to happen. Are you thinking about something untoward? No, 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 of course not. Well, good. Coco it is. Hot? Creamy? <gasps> Coco. You know, I like talking to you, Petey. People are so hung up with age, but really, it's just a number. But yours is so much higher than mine. You seem nervous, Petey. Are you nervous, Petey? I mean, I guess so. I know. It must be so hard to be a young man these days. All the rules are changing. The pressures, the contradictions, the confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty confused right about now. I know. And I want to hear all about it. There, there. There, there. There. <laughs> Quite the day you've had. You must be exhausted becoming a rodeo champion. Nah, it wasn't too bad. Kind of invigorating, actually. You're lying. Why do you say that? Because I found this. It's not mine. Oh, please. You didn't beat McCool. Odds are he mopped the floor with you. The man is practically built for horse wrangling. Or lassoing, or caressing the body of a middle-aged woman. Why is your upper lip sweating? It's not. And why'd you lie to me? You know I don't care if you win a stupid rodeo or not. It's not the rodeo. It's everything. I used to be someone. I used to be the big man in town. And now, I'm not even a man. I'm just some poor schnook who has to tell a Mountie he's a better man than me. It's demobilizing. You shut your mouth. You're Jimmy Falcone. And Jimmy Falcone's a fighter, not a quitter. I don't give a damn about a rodeo or losing it to some Mountie, but you do. So suck it up and be the man I fell in love with. You're right. I'm going to take that Mountie down. Hand me my ass. Jimmy, the other way. Ass backwards, so that's where the expression comes from.
like manure. Jimmy, what are you doing here? You already conceded. Yeah? Well, I'm unconceited. You know when I said you're a better man than me? Well, I'm taking it back. As you wish, but I do advise against it. There's a reason bull riding is worth more than half the points. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So is cheerleading, but I still do it. Now, out of my way. Where the hell have you been? So unclean. Oh my god! No effing way! You did it! Congratulations! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, no more touching! I don't ever want to be touched again! Or smell mothballs! Or see a doily! Or eat a hard candy! Or see dentures come out! Or see weird stockings that go just below the knee! Or see breasts that go just below the knee! He just completely ignored me. That is so hot. Petey! Petey, wait up! All right, Bull. I've got a lot riding on this. So like I told my wife on our wedding night, give me eight seconds and I'll be on my way. Whoa! Ow! Oh! Okay, I asked nicely. Now we do it my way. Oh! Italian guy. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Stay down, Jimmy! Don't get up, Daddy! You can't do it, Pop! Stop it, Pop! It's embarrassing! Jimmy, enough! <laughs> ah. Jimmy, stop! You're killing yourself! You have heart. Tremendous heart, I admit it, but no bet is worth this! It is to me. All right, if it will make you end this madness, fine. You're a better man than I, Jimmy McDougal. A better man than I. Tell me something I don't know. Jimmy, you did it! He said it, you won! Way to hang in there, Pops! It was amazing, Daddy! Jimmy, can you do it again? I was in the john. I began the day as a schnook. But now, I am a man! Me too. La 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 la